reminded them of what the, the requirements are. We reminded them what the occupancy placard says in the way of numbers and uh, made sure that their exits were clear and remain clear. And they've been very cooperative uh, up to this point. We expect more of the same time. We are uh, in a position to do uh, anything that may arise on that corner at any time. But um, we're looking at it as a festival, a party, and I don't see that uh, that will change tonight or tomorrow uh, leading into the World Series. So if there is a victory, police say they are anticipating no problems, hoping to let everybody have a good time. But an hour and a half after the game is over, they're going to try to get everybody out of here. Back to you guys down on the field. All right, let's have the right kind of fun. Thanks, Craig Wall. You Back with more Pen and Push right after this. Lately, this may save you the trip. Car and driver rights goes like a rocket ship and stops with equal brilliance. Edmunds.com comments, Jaguar has raised the bar. And Auto Week concludes, it is as much a driver's car, perhaps even more so, than the S-Class or even the BMW 7 Series. Visit your Chicagoland Jaguar retailer. Allergies can strike anywhere, anytime. That's why I take Clarinex. Clarinex helps block histamine. Get 24-hour non-drowsy allergy relief from pets, pollen, mold, and dust. Side effects are similar to sugar pill, including sore throat, dry mouth, and fatigue. Clarinex. Talk to your doctor. About the anywhere, anytime allergy relief of Clarinex. Wow, this store looks great. Good job. Wow, the store looks great. Good job. It's gonna be huge. Value City's Mall Busters, where you can get tons more stuff than you get at the mall. Come in and check out our brand name outerwear for ladies and men, just $39.99. Every time you turn around, there's something new. Value City, the best bargains in the city. Well, the Cubs are in play. Fox News is at work. First on Fox tonight, we have a breaking Bringing story. you stories that no one else will think of. Our internet vigilantes, the police force of the future. No one else can get. It dawned on me that, you know, maybe he really was a professional hitman. And no one else will touch. I grabbed it like this, and I had something to put asleep. Coming this November, see why Fox News Chicago was the best in the news game. Bar none. The crowd builds at Wrigley Field, as does the excitement. Cubs, Marlins, first pitch, 13 minutes away. The Cubs out to clinch their first berth in the World Series in 58 years. Lou Rawls right now delivering the national anthem. We're back in two minutes with more of the Fox pennant push. Ron Santo. All Chicagoans admire him for his brilliant career at third base and as today's broadcast voice of the Cubs. No wonder he always draws a crowd. Can I have your autograph? What other reason could there be? They like my Chevy. Use bonus cash and get 4,000 total cash back on every 2003 Trailblazer or get zero APR for 72 months. Hurry, bonus cash ends October 20th. Mr. Santo, can I drive your Chevy? No. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer. My favorite food is, hmm, um, uh. Our new menu makes it even harder to decide at Old Country Buffet with tasty new items each night, like salmon filet, tender bone and ham, and savory peppered pork loin. There's new chicken marsala, orange chicken, and more new items for lunch, like deep dish pizza. I, um, um. It's a lot to think about. Come in today for the new menu at Old Country Buffet. Great choice. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome, a disease one child out of thousands will get. Our son was born with it, a disease that rare. What do you do? Where do you go? 
<laughs> Taking my shirt off. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Luckily, we found them. Who it is. Oh, yeah. I see you. Come on, baby. That's it. Speed up. Yeah, you come to Papa. You come right here. Give me some lip service. Yeah, that's right, baby. Plant one right here. Oh, 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 not so fast. Whoa. What a kisser. The irresistible accord from Honda. Ah, oh, playing hard to get, are you? Welcome back to pregame here live from Wrigley Field. Cubs pennant push here on Fox. About 11 minutes to game time. We're starting it a little early tonight. Major League Baseball opening pitch 7 o'clock tonight. Right, and if you're if you're late coming to the game, hustle on over and, and bring something warm to wear. It's not going to be freezing tonight, but come prepared. Everybody look up right now. Everybody's got the sweaters going. Maybe a parka or two, the leather jacket. Temperature's dropping. It is dropping by about 10:30 when the champagne's popping. It'll be it'll, it'll be icy. Yeah, it'll be a little icy. <laughs> Let's talk about the pitching matchup tonight. We've touched on Mark Pryor so far. Pryor, of course, 18 game winner over the course of the regular season. He's won once in this series, twice overall in the postseason. How about Pavano? Now, here's a guy. He's won a couple games in the postseason for the Marlins in a relief role. He did face the Cubs as a starter in July and lost, but pitched pretty well, giving up three runs in seven innings. Now, something else about Pryor that we've recently discovered, Mark Sapelsa, you wonder where he gets his strength, the secret behind his success. I'm thinking it might be milk. <laughs> you know, he said he's barely old enough to drink a beer, so he might as well <laughs> stick with the milk. This was that uh, milk mustache commercial campaign a few months back prior. Good guy, and we asked him recently at a press conference, just, you know, what about the Cubs fans, what it would mean, and, and what he can imagine the celebration would be like for Cub Nation once the Cubs clinch that berth in the series. Being a Cubs fan is, I guess, been tough throughout the years. Um, you know, it was tough on me last year. It's not tough on me this year. I guess that's the best way I can put it. Um, you know, hopefully we can get past this hurdle and, and move on. But, uh, you know, hopefully the city has something at least, uh, you know, how whatever the outcome is, you know, they could say, hey, you know, 2003 was a good year. I think perhaps they will say that. Whatever happens, 2003 has been a great year. One more win, that's all they need. If it doesn't happen tonight, of course, there's Kerry Wood tomorrow night. Cubs fans would rather not have to go through that excruciatingly painful idea of a Game 7. I know that. Here's the only thing I can guarantee. We're going to be back for a post game tonight. We promise you that. Corey will be on the field here with Psycho Lions. He'll come down from the Fox Network booth. We'll be outside covering all the flavor. Thanks for watching the pregame. We'll see you here afterwards, and uh, Cubs Marlins coming your way on the Fox Network right after this. Chicago's best pizza begins with selecting the best ingredients. The best tomatoes, vegetables, meats, and cheeses all come together to create Giordano's famous stuffed pizza, which is why we wouldn't think of serving you anything but the best. From pizzas to the freshest salads, soups, spaghettis, lasagna, chicken, parmesan, and much more. Giordano's, where being the best isn't just a slogan, it's a Chicago tradition for nearly 30 years. Giordano's famous stuffed pizza. It's my job to make you make sure the furniture was hand selected by but oh decorating process can be real. I don't really like that line. I think we've said that already. The guy had a haircut like that. There's one thing he deserved, but that was a noogie. <laughs> 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 Mark with my Walter. <laughs> you open up your body language a little bit, you're kind of tight. Hey, come on in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Walter E. Smith. 
You dream it, we build it. Can we take these things off? No. Please do. Ow! The Hyundai Elantra, a comparison. More standard features and a more powerful engine than a Honda Civic LX. All for over $2,000 less when comparably equipped. And only the Elantra is protected by America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. Looks like we have a winner. Test drive the Hyundai Elantra, nicely equipped for just $11,939 at your Hyundai dealer. Hurry into the Hyundai winning season clearance and get $1,500 cash back or 0% APR through October 31st. I'm Cameron Hall, exploding cell phones. Is there any truth behind the rumors? And find out what turns Carmen Electra on, why her perfect fantasy may be you tomorrow at 7. Day on Fox. It's a damp, chilly night at Wrigley Field in Chicago. We welcome you to game six of this National League Championship Series where the Cubs are trying to close it out on the home front, leading this best of seven series over the Florida Marlins, three games to two. Hi again, everybody. I'm Tom Brenneman, welcoming you, as always, to playoff baseball here on Fox. Well, the stars seem to be aligned for the Chicago Cubs. They have Mark Pryor getting the ball tonight, their best pitcher. Kerry Wood waiting in the wing should there be a Game 7 tomorrow. But we are talking about the Chicago Cubs, a franchise that has not been to the World Series since 1945. Steve Lyons, clearly, there is pressure on both teams tonight, but I know you feel there is more pressure, at least in this game, on the visiting Florida Marlins. Well, to me, there's no question about that. Everybody talks about must-win situations. This is a must-win situation for the Florida Marlins. They were the underdogs coming into this series. They're down now, but you know what? They play like a loose team. There are a lot of young guys. They're having fun. No one expected them to get this far, but if they are able to beat Mark Pryor in this game tonight, the weight of the world will come down on Kerry Wood in Game 7 because this is an organization who has never been expected to win. Now they are, and if it gets to a Game 7, that will be tremendous pressure on the Cubs. We know all about Mark Pryor. Arguably, he has been the best pitcher in the National League the entire season. Al Leiter, you suspected and thought that Carl Pavano should get the start here tonight. Jack McKeon agrees, and I know you feel he's the right man for this job tonight. I do, and there's nothing second tier about Carl Pavano. This guy had a good year, and especially at the end of the season. In his last 15 starts, he was 11 and 4. He led the team in quality starts with 21. He's got good stuff, great poise. He's the right guy for tonight. Carl Pavano trying to keep the Florida Marlins hopes alive here in game six and send it to game seven tomorrow where it's Mark Redman against Kerry Wood. But first things first, the Cubs at Wrigley Field trying to get to the World Series first pitch next. Hey, man, remember how Ted was talking about his new acting job, but he was a little, um, hazy on the details? Right up here, baby. Well, ladies and gentlemen, say hello <laughs> to Pickle Boy. I'm so glad I got to see this. Happy to help. Picture mail that talks from Sprint. At Sprint stores, choose from a wide selection of picture phones starting at $99.99. Share it when it happens. Unsurpassed engineering. Unparalleled technology. It blows away the competition. Champion. Mach 3 Turbo Champion. It's the world's best shave. Gillette guarantees it. Now with a red-hot new look. Nothing else even comes close. Test drive one today. Mach 3 Turbo Champion. From Gillette. The best a man can get. Program in the first four dollars. Summer wind. Luxury SUV for 2003? Well, there's this. 4X Motion All Wheel Drive. Beautiful. Touareg, the Volkswagen that does what other Volkswagens don't. 
The League Championship Series on Fox brought to you by Sprint, proudly offering picture mail and PCS Vision picture phones by Gillette Mach 3 Turbo for the closer shave of less irritation, even against the grain. By MasterCard, there are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. And by Radio Shack, official sponsor of Major League Baseball. 72-year-old Jack McKeon, his first trip to the postseason as a skipper. And his Marlins facing an elimination game as they did on Sunday in Florida and came away with a 4-0 win behind Josh Beckett. The Marlin lineup brought to you by State Farm. Juan Pierre in center, Luis Castillo at second, Ivan Rodriguez catching. Miguel Cabrera again in right, Derek Lee at first, Mike Lowell at third, a latter third of Jeff Conine, Alex Gonzalez, and Carl Pavano in place of Brad Penny. And on the mound for the Cubs, an 18-game winner during the regular season, 2-0 in the postseason, right-hander Mark Pryor. This is the do-it-all guy for this Cubs, the right guy for the job in game six to win it all. He's a control freak. He puts the ball almost where he wants it, anytime he wants it. Mid-90s fastball, good movement on it, and he's got tremendous poise out there for a young kid. It's a year and a half in the major leagues and flat out the ace of this staff, and this is a staff with Kerry Wood on it. Al Leiter, you talked about it. You pitched in Game 7 of the 1997 World Series. Right now, Mark Pryor's on the mound. You said earlier there's no debate about it. He is nervous. What exactly does he need to think about? What does he need to do to win this Game 6 and end the series? To focus on Pierre and the, and the Marlin lineup. What, the ner nervousness is good. Obviously, you, you, you drive off of that and off, so it feeds off of your aggressive nature. But you have to focus back to what matters. And what he has control of is when he gets the ball in his hand, to execute a hitter's weakness and that's to look at Pierre right now and just constantly focus on executing pitches and don't allow the exterior distractions of what might happen at the end of this game affect what he does right here on this very pitch. Tonight's game also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. We are set to go. Temperatures expected to get down in the low 40s. We had a great deal of rain during the day today. The field is very wet, especially the outfield. Juan Pierre digging in. First pitch swinging, fouls it out of play, strike one, and we are underway. Pierre five hits and 23 at bats during this LCS with only one stolen base and three attempts. The Marlins trying to score a first inning run for the first time in this series. Two. And Jack McKeon told us earlier, Steve, it is very important, he believes, to get on the board first for the first time. Well, the top of that order is what's done it for him all year long, Pierre and Castillo. Unfortunately for the Florida Marlins, you're looking for a guy on the mound that struggles in the first inning. That ain't Mark Pryor. Popped up, short left field, and Alex Gonzalez out to get it. A very late arriving crowd here at Wrigley Field. Still a number of empty seats, which is quite surprising. Undoubtedly, they will fill up soon. The Cubs defensively have Alou in left, Lofton in center, Sammy in right. Aramis Ramirez, Alex Gonzalez on the left side, Mark Grezolanik, and Randall Simon on the right with a battery of Pryor and Paul Bacco. Now Luis Castillo, only four hits in 20 at-bats with a run batted in. He looks at a strike. Opposing hitters against Pryor in the first inning hit just 187. Pryor yet to throw a pitch out of the strike zone. Five pitches, five strikes. Well, generally, control and your ability to put the ball in the zone has uh, some bearing on where your mind is. And obviously, with what you just said, Tom, it doesn't seem like he's affected a whole lot right now. Slapped into left center field. It'll fall in a base hit for Luis Castillo. He's a one-out base runner. It is interesting to note that the first game that Pryor started in this series, the Cubs won the game 12-3. They gave Pryor an early 8-0 lead. But... If you take away the pitcher spot, the Marlin lineup in that game collected eight hits in 28 at-bats. That's a 350 batting average with two doubles and two home runs. Well, you also have to remember, too, that, I mean, here's a guy that rarely throws his changeup, but in that game threw a lot of changeups. I mean, he was experimenting out there. He was, he was playing around. Here you're talking about a league championship series with the big lead, and he's out there 
working on his changeup. <laughs> That's a nice luxury to have. Like Rodriguez, a breaking ball, checks his swing. They appeal he didn't go around, and it's ball one to Rodriguez. Seven hits and 20 at bats, two home runs, eight runs batted in, including the National League Division Series, 14 RBIs. But look what he's done in the Marlin wins in the postseason. Three homers, 12 batted in, only two RBIs in their losses. Not too many people are going to catch up with that pitch. Good riding high fastball up in the strike zone. A high fastball always looks better to a hitter because he sees it better. Fortunately for the hitter, it usually has a few more miles an hour on it when it's up there. And your eyes light up, but you can't catch up. Breaking ball and a good one by Pryor. One and two. And because of that last pitch that Putt swung at, 95 near his neck, that's what made him commit on that curveball in the dirt. They have to commit a little sooner, especially with somebody who throws as hard as Pryor. Everything starts a little sooner. Came back with a fastball again, and this time Pudge lays off. Two balls, two strikes. Just underway, a one-out single by Luis Castillo after Pierre popped up to begin the ball game. Larry Rothschild often talks about how easy Pryor throws the ball, how fluid and easy his motion is. And for a hitter, what that does to you is the ball gets on you so much quicker. The ball explodes late. Ball's coming at you. You feel like you got a beat on. Next thing you know, it's by you with exploding action on every one of his pitches at the end. I.E. Mariano Rivera. Still two and two on Ivan Rodriguez. That ball fouled off into the stands directly behind the plate and it hit someone and the medical people here at Wrigley Field immediately rushing over to try and bring some help. Hopefully that fellow's all right. Three and two and you would suspect Castillo will be running on the pitch here. Pudge generally put the ball in play. Castillo with great speed over at first base. That guy who throws a lot of strikes. 50 walks in 211 innings. Three and two on Rodriguez. Runner goes. Breaking ball is high, and the Marlins have two on with one out here in the opening inning against Pryor. Pryor got ahead of Pudge Rodriguez in that at bat, and the at bat got away from the 23 year old right hander. Quite a bit of respect right there for Rodriguez. You get a 3-2 breaking ball when you know that the runner's running. Looked like he was trying to get the strikeout right there, not really worrying about what Castillo was going to be doing. Now the 20-year-old Miguel Cabrera called up from Double-A Carolina on June the 20th. Hit a game-winning home run, his major league debut. And in the postseason, since starting 0 for 9 in the Giants series, has 12 hits in his last 25 at bats. First pitch swinging, fly ball into right center field and playable for Lofton. Castillo will tag up and he'll advance on to third to a landing in him. Be a little surprised, Cabrera first pitch swinging there after the bout of wildness, if you will, from Pryor and the Pryor at bat. Well, I was just thinking that. What he's thinking up there is Pryor is not a wild pitcher, does not have a history of being wild, and if you walk a guy in front of me, I'm thinking if you're Pryor, you're going to come right at me and throw a strike first pitch, I'm jumping all over it. Well, also, too, this ended up being a backup slider slurve curve, and Cabrera's very aggressive. He's shown that. He's swinging. And as a result of that looking like a fastball out of his hand, he was out in front. Yep, and leaning out in front, too. Been a rough series for Derek Lee. Only three hits and 22 at bats with a home run. Fastball inside. Yeah, that's what happens to you when you think at the plate sometimes, Tommy. It doesn't help you. Cabrera goes up there looking for his pitch fastball, doesn't get it, but still swings. And prior saying, You don't think I'm just going to flip a, a get me over fastball to you just because I walked that last guy? Swung on and fouled out of play. 
Well, this postseason has been ugly for Derek so far. Nine games, only one home run and three runs batted in. It's interesting to note, however, that the three hits in this series, two of them came against Mark Pryor, including his only home run of the postseason. And defensively, you have plus plus fastball staff, and generally Lee likes the ball down out over the plate. And they've been tying them up. They've been pitching them great. Fastball up and in. He fouled it back one and two. He has been a lot closer in this series to getting better at swinging the bat. He's not far away now. We saw him foul a few pitches straight back. He fouled that one straight back. Unfortunately. You never get a break in this starting rotation. You start to feel good, and then who do you get to face? Prior, and then Wood tomorrow if needed. What you doing, Brian? Oh, I'm just putting my name and address in these bottles and sending them out to sea. <laughs> Hopefully someone will find them and contact me someday. Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Why? Why do you torture me, Brian Henderson of 12 Maple Lane? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Brian! <gasps> Nice to meet you. Wow. With Dish Network Satellite TV, you get the lowest all-digital price in America every day. Just $24.99 a month for over 50 top digital channels. A price that's guaranteed through January 2005. Order today and get a free three-room satellite TV system with free installation. That's right. Satellite TV in three rooms of your home free. Want more? Call and ask how you can get three free months of our most popular value pack with HBO and Cinemax. Call 1-800-WOW-DISH or visit Radio Shack, Sears, or a local participating retailer. You live a lot of your life between 0 and 55. No one understands that like your state farm agent. why more people insure their cars with us than anyone else. Because we think car insurance should be as much about you as it is about your car. Hello? Hey, honey. Now, don't forget to pick up the dog. Me? Forget? Now there's a phone you can use as a wireless or as a walkie-talkie. Hey, Gina, when do we record? Dan. Oh, thanks. Now at Radio Shack, get a Verizon Wireless Motorola V60P, a push-to-talk wireless phone for just $149.99. Hey, Vanessa. Rick, you didn't remember. Delivery, Miss Williams. Vanessa. <gasps> oh. Radio Shack. Dusty Baker trying to get a team to the World Series for the second consecutive year. He did so with the Giants last season. His starting lineup brought to you by State Farm. Kenny Lofton in center. Mark Rezolana gets second. Sammy Sosa in right. Moise Salou in left. Aramis Ramirez in third. Randall Simon in first. A latter third of Alex Gonzalez, Paul Baco, and Mark Pryor. And on the mound, the 27-year-old Southington, Connecticut native Carl Pavano, who has pitched out of the bullpen during the entire postseason, during the division series, and this LCS. His first postseason start here tonight. And there for strike one to Kenny Lofton. Now there's the numbers on the season, and I think Outlander had it right. This guy is a stud out there when he's on. He's nervous, but I don't think his knees are shaking. He's ready for this start and an outstanding season. And there's Lofton again. He floats one in the right field, a leadoff base hit. Change up. Just went down and got it. Often stayed with it pretty good. Just looped it into right field. Didn't try to do a whole lot with it. Kenny Lofton, 12 home runs on the season, but you never think of him as a power threat, really. Just trying to put the ball in play. Dusty Baker said he would try to play for an early run, play a little small ball. Let's see if Brezelonic is up there to bunt him over. Mark only 4 of 23 in the LCS. Puts down the bunt perfectly. He will advance a runner. Nice job. 
This is what the Cubs have done so well in this series, either at home or on the road. Get on the board first somehow. We talked about Mark Pryor being a guy that does not struggle in the first inning. Pavano does. Posing hurt hitters versus Pavano in the first inning. Hit 328 with three home runs. And Sammy Sosa is a 455 career hitter against Pavano with two home runs as well. Lofton at second, one away, and here's Sammy. Ball one low and away. Lofton has reached base in the first inning. And now three of the first five games leading up to tonight, so four out of six. All three times he got on base in the first inning in this series, he scored a run. Foul away, and that foul tip got a piece of punch Rodriguez. Ball gets fouled off your foot in a game like this. It's going to bark at you a little bit more than down in South Florida where it was warm. Down and away from Sammy, and he just got underneath the foot protector on that shin guard. He got him right on the inside part of the big toe on his right foot. Well, that's going to take a long time to walk off. Not freezing out here tonight. Crisp. Ignorance. You got that right. You got the scouting report on Carl Pavano. Sinker, slider, split, also throws a changeup. Fastball is the key to all those other pitches. He's got to be able to establish that sinking fastball so that he can throw everything else. And they say he gets in trouble when he starts to yank his pitches, when he overthrows and hooks the ball and pulls everything down and away to the right handed hitters, like that pitch that he just threw to Sosa. Lofton at second, one away. One and one to Sammy Sosa here in the opening inning. Fastball, paints the outside corner of strike. Mike Riley, the home plate umpire. Joined by Jerry Crawford, Chuck Merrillweather, Field and Colbert, Mike Everett down the left field line, and Larry Poncino down the right field line. of the numbers Steve was talking about a moment ago Sosa against Pavano Sosa with runners in scoring position during this postseason a 364 batter with two home runs won the dramatic home run in game one in the bottom of the ninth to tie had a good rip there and fouled it back that is a moment when a starting pitcher just says wow made a mistake there and I got away with it tried to come in he was actually a good good idea come inside he went three down and away Sammy swung at one and a, and a good paint that's supposed to be inside Sammy really should have waffled it based on his location. Lofton will score. Sosa to second, and the Cubs lead 1 0. That is a great at bat because that's how they're going to try to get Sammy out. They don't think he can hit a good fastball. We've talked about that all series, but they're also going to try to get him out with breaking balls off the plate away. That's a fastball away, another one down and away that got punched. Same pitch one more time as Al talked about. Tried to go in and miss, but now they say he hit slider away and he won't reach it. He did reach it. Good job of hanging in there and kind of thinking along with the pitcher. The Cubs again score in the opening inning to see what Sosa has done. When it counts in this series thus far, Moise Salou, the batter. And the former Marlin looks at ball one away. Now lose six of 21 in the series with a home run and three batted in. 
Cubs have now outscored the Marlins 12 nothing in the first inning in this series. The 8 run scored for Kenny Lawton ties an NLCS record. One of those names Will Clark of course in 1989 for the Giants against the Cubs the last time the Cubs played an LCS. They have pitched Moises and Lou very tough in this series. Job, Sammy. I think it's a big mistake if they think they can come in on him. They've stayed away from him very well. They've gone away 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 and when he starts thinking out there they've been able to bust him inside off the plate. They try to come in. We talked about this before. I think he has the quickest hands of any guy in that Cub lineup. Roll up the third baseline. Low will let it go foul. Talking along the line with your his quick hands. That was a fastball away, 90, and he pulled it. Tried to pull it. Tried yeah. Pull it. So you talk about quickness. That's it. Actually hurt him in that sense because it's probably a pitch he would have liked to have gone up the middle. They've done a good job of just. Doing the opposite of what Moises has been thinking. If he's looking away, they've busted him in. If he's been trying to pull the ball, they've stayed away very well with him. Actually pitched him very carefully. I think they want to miss anywhere on the inner half to Moises Alou for as strong as he is and as quick as he is inside. At second, one out. Down and away, three and one. If you're Pervano, you have to think that this one run isn't just one run. Against Pryor, it could be a loss. Fastball hitter, it's not such a bad idea. If you go off speed, you walk him, you got the double play in order with Ramirez. Caught the outside corner and Alou disagrees. Full count. You can see, watch the way Alou kind of pulls out a little bit. See that front shoulder go and the hip go? He's wanting to put everything that way towards the towards left field. He's really kind of pulling out a little bit too much, trying to pull. If Pavana can duplicate that pitch, he throws it again. Round ball in the hole. Gonzalez will not even attempt the throw. That'll be an infield hit for Alou, and Sosa stays at second base. Aramis Ramirez, 5 of 19 in the series. Three of his five hits for home runs. He's knocked in seven. Lovano in there in place of Brad Penny, the game two starter who got banged around here at Wrigley Field. Breaking ball down and away, and Ramirez chased it. Strike one. Ramirez and Gonzalez have both been. Big hitters in this series for the Chicago Cubs. Double A battery indeed. Six home runs between the two, 14 runs batted in. Another breaking ball. 0 oh 2. Lovano has a good one early on here tonight. Oh, this guy was a. A stud coming up in the Red Sox system. You'll remember he got traded to the Montreal Expos in 1997 along with Tony Armas Jr. for none other than Pedro Martinez. So much that organization thought of him. Two on, one in, one out. Pitch a win. Cabano was traded from Montreal to the Marlins in a multiplayer deal that involved Cliff Floyd going the other way. Based on those two swings that Ramirez had on the sliders down the way. You see he can't hit it, but he shows, throw it again. 
Fly ball left field. Conine's got it for the second out of the inning. Well, you look at the Ivy. Of course, the idea and planted originally by the late, great Bill Vec. It is rare to see October baseball at Wrigley Field. Even more rare to see the Green Ivy take on the colors of fall. A lot of orange and red. A couple of the Cub players during batting practice actually had a couple of the red pieces of ivy taken out and stuck into their ball caps as they were taken infield and taken batting practice. Kind of a cool sight. Randall Simon a hitter. First pitch swinging, grounds and foul. Randall five hits and 14 at bats with a home run and four batted in. He hit the big home run in game three at Pro Player Stadium. He's up there hacking. Free swinger. First pitch split. Off the plate and slow. Feed off of his aggressiveness. Try to get him to chase that high fastball, which Simon will do. Took at that time, one and one. Tough thing about Simon being so aggressive is that he doesn't walk very often, but doesn't strike out very often either for a slasher. Great bad ball hitter. You don't have to throw a strike to get him out. But you also don't have to throw a strike for him to hit a laser somewhere. There's a laser in the right field, but playable for Cabrera, and that'll end the inning. One run, three hits, two men left. Marlins bat in the second, trailing Mark Fire, one nothing. Come on in, Derek. Derek, this is the postseason. I hear you're out dancing, eating, and just carousing with your friends. Is it true you're going out every night? Absolutely not. Good. If you want to enjoy the New York nightlife, bring your Visa card. Because Orso, Cheetah, and the Broom Street Bar don't take American Express. Hey, Derek, we are running late. Sorry. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Oh, come on, Nate. You're going to be late. <sighs> okay. Sometimes moms need a little help getting their families going. That's why every morning should begin with Florida orange juice. The best start under the sun. Hey, that thing got a Emmy? You're about to find out. Please. Dodge Ram with the legendary Hemi. Loved by those who have one, dreamt about by those who don't. Sweet! <laughs> Smooth Reese's Peanut Butter. Creamy milk chocolate. Get lost in a Reese's. <laughs> hey, Fred, do you think the show's funny? Well, my stuff is funny. Of course, I could be funny reading a phone book. Look, relax. The show's going to be great. Trust me, I've been in this business a long time. Okay, ever had any hits? Uh, Waiting for Guffman, Best New Show, A Mighty Wind. Those are hits. Critical hits. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Critical hit. See it for yourself. The series premiere of A Minute with Stan Hooper. Wednesday, October 29th on Fox. That is one funny dog. <laughs> I was running in the street in San Pedro, and now... I'm wake up in the major leagues. I play hard every day because this is the way that we play in my country. I never would dream that I would be playing the major league level. Playing regular feels like, wow, it's like another dream come true. I live for this. Watch the World Series on Fox beginning October 18th. Don't miss it. Good look at the crowd out on Cleveland Avenue. The city of Chicago has really beefed up its security and police force in preparation of this potential clinching night for the Chicago Cubs, trying to advance onto the World Series for the first time since 1945, and a light rain begins to fall. 
and one to Mike Lowell. He opened a second inning. Cubs lead one nothing. It rained and rained and rained all day today. Didn't stop until about four o'clock this afternoon. Two and one. Lowell getting his third straight start in the series after not starting the first three games. You see Mike Lowell wearing that protective device on the outside of his left hand, the hand that was broken, much the same way that Lowell hammered down the left field line, but bending foul. The Astros, when Jeff Bagwell had broke his hand, came up with that device to wear for some protection. Sensational regular season before breaking the hand. A couple of big home runs here in the LCS. In the air, straightaway center field, walked in racing back. And at the track, he's got it. The impact of Kenny Lofton since coming over from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Boy, has it been big in the postseason. We asked Mark Pryor about it. Kenny's been nothing but just spectacular, you know, for us and starting us off every game. and. I think ever since he come, came over, we've been just scoring runs early in the game, which, you know, makes uh, our job as the starting, you know, starting pitchers a lot easier. We get a little bit more room to work with. One away in the inning for Jeff Conai, and he slaps it off the glove of Simon and hit him in the head. And prior late getting over to the bag, he thought that Simon would catch that ball. We'll see how they rule it, but Conai aboard with one away. It's a base hit. Kind of a comical play. Simon reaches up, tries to get it, won't stay in his glove, and then bounces off his head. Came up with it quickly, and then kind of a blind toss back to Pryor, and Pryor's thinking, ah, there's no way I'm getting over there to get him. <laughs> well, you taught spring training anything on that side, your reaction is to, to cover first, but if you saw where Simon was, he was way in the hole. So maybe Pryor thought it was a base hit right off the bat. Breaking ball, the number eight hitter is shortstop Alex Gonzalez. Two hits and 17 at bats with a couple of runs batted in in the LCS. Left two on in the opening inning against Pryor. Mark got Cabrera on a fly ball to center and struck out lead to end the inning. Ground ball, they get the out at second, and that's all. Two away in the inning. Well, it's time to take a look at our sprint virtual manager question. Who has the best starting rotation? The Marlins, the Cubs, the Red Sox, or the Yankees? To answer the question, use your PCS vision phone from Sprint. Log on to FoxSports.com, keyword MLB on Fox. Psycho, I have a feeling that we could ask who has the ugliest uniforms in the major leagues, and the Cubs are going to win everything. <laughs> <laughs> that ball in the air down the right field line and out of play by Carl Pavano. Kind of shows you what kind of impact the Cubs have had on the entire nation, not just the area of Chicago. A lot of Cub fans everywhere you go. I'll tell you what, you look at three of the four teams, and I think the Florida Marlins are going to start to have a little bit better following with the team they're starting to put together here. No question about it. But you talk about how many Red Sox fans there are across the country, how many Yankee fans there are across the country, and Cub fans. They're everywhere. I just think Cub fans have more computers. Or more sprint phones. and bat roller up the middle. Greselonic will get there and throw out Pavano to end the end. One hit, one left. One nothing, Chicago. Wireless troubles? My phone works here, not there. Same with voicemail, email. Sprint's is different. All your services work the same wherever you go on the most complete all-digital advanced wireless network in the nation. And all the 
calls are clear. So everything works. And this will never happen again. PCS from Sprint. Try the nation's most complete wireless network. When Taco Bell first created the zesty chicken bowl, we thought we'd freshly prepare them right at your table. We still freshly prepare them. Just not at your table. The Zesty Chicken Bowl. Tender slices of grilled all-white meat chicken, seasoned rice, three cheeses, crisp lettuce, and fiesta salsa. Made right when you order it, so it tastes even better. For fresh-made taste, think outside the bun. He may not be a player. He got himself a good heart. But he's going to show them how to have a ball. Cuba Gooding Jr., Ed Harris. Go quick! Go quick! Radio. Rated PG. Sneak Preview Saturday opens everywhere October 24th. Uh, I remember the song, the commercial with the candy man. They sang the candy man can, the candy man can. It makes the world taste good. <laughs> Do you have the right truck? Hi, uh, black coffee to go. Does your truck have better resale value than Ford and Dodge? A Silverado half-ton pickup does. Hey, guys, what's up? Hey, is this your truck? What's it going for? What do you mean, what's it going for? Let me I make you an offer. It's not for sale. Leave it here. It's for sale. But it's not for sale. Silverado. It's the right truck from Chevy. Like the League Championship Series on Fox, brought to you by Chevy Silverado. It's the right truck. By radio, starring Cuba Gooding Jr. and Ed Harris in theaters October 24th, rated PG. By Taco Bell, where you can spice up the night. And by Sprint, proudly offering picture mail and PCS, vision picture phones. Welcome back to Wrigley Field in Chicago. Game six of this National League Championship Series, and the Cubs trying to finish off the Florida Marlins with a 1-0 lead. First pitch swing, Alex Gonzalez, two Alex Gonzalez, one pitch, one out. It's happened a few times in this series, hasn't it? I thought you were going to keep the running tab on that. It's getting up there, Alex Gonzalez to Alex Gonzalez. Doesn't make you think too much. Well, Al Leiter actually did a little research. We told you about the nicknames. Alex Gonzalez of the Cubs is just nicknamed Gonzo. But Alex Gonzalez of the Marlins is nicknamed Seabass. As it's ball one to Paul Bacco, and, and Al, you actually did extensive research as to why he is nicknamed oh, Seabass. Yeah. Extensive. Well, we all thought he was a great fisherman, but apparently uh, Kevin Millar gave him that nickname because he's always got a game face on, and I guess the Seabass always has kind of a frown. <laughs> Smiling there. Who hasn't Kevin Millar given a nickname to? <laughs> Kevin Millar be giving himself nicknames if he looks in the mirror these days. Shaved head, bad mustache. Two and two to Paul Baco. Millar and the Red Sox trailing that series three games to two as it moves back to Yankee Stadium. Still two and two to Baco. Bono allowed that first inning run, but I know Al in between innings, you thought he did a nice job of just keeping the damage to one. There were two on with only one out and already a run in. It's a great job. You, first of all, first inning is, is a big pressure inning for a starting pitcher anyway, but for him to have that start and only give up one run, that was great. Slapped in the hole. Gonzalez oh. lost his footing, throws anyway, and it's tardy. We talked about how wet the field is. They have the infield covered. But the outfield grass is very, very wet. Tommy, I don't even care that the kid didn't throw him out. The guy is so cool down there at short. I mean, this is so pretty. He is a lot of fun to watch play the game. Feet go out from, from under him right there. Turns around, facing entirely the other way, and throws a strike from the seat of his pants. Now Pryor, he had one home run during the regular season. And he squares to Bunt, takes outside. Ball one to Pryor. Pryor 
had seven sacrifices during the regular year. He had two in his only start of this series. Stabbed at it, missed it. One and one. Let's check in with Josh Lewin. Hey, Tommy, the difference between the infield grass and the outfield grass is palpable. As you mentioned, the tarp was on the field as it rained pretty much all day. That's why Seabass was on his fins a moment ago. Oh, how about that? Great to have Josh Lewin with us here tonight. Been with us throughout the entire series and will continue to be as long as she lasts. There's one thing you know for sure as a pitcher, all the bunting practice we do, that bunting is absolute. This is critical that a pitcher does his job. Much more important than being able to hit. Gonna try to drop it down one more time, isn't it? Yes. Ooh, pulled it back and looked at a strike three. I was going to try the little butcher boy, fake the bunt, pull it back, and try to slap it through the infield with all the infielders moving. Then he couldn't pull the trigger. That's just a little, looked like a little backup cutter. Not a lot on that pitch. Wait, did, a lot of times you do the butcher boy to get it out there. The pitcher sees that you're still bunting and maybe thinking that he's going to groove a fastball. And the only reason why he didn't swing there because he thought it was a fastball and it was a breaking ball. Locked him up. Two away and back to the top of the order we go with Kenny Lofton. He led off the game with a single. Bunt got him a second. He scored on a double by Sosa. One hopper at Lee and that's that. One hit, one man left. We played two at game six. The Marlins trail prior in the Cubs by a run. Program in the first, four dollars. Reach out on the wireless service America Trust. AT&T Wireless. Before you take Prilosec OTC for heartburn, there's something you should know. You have to keep taking it for 14 days, heartburn or not. I'd rather take one Pepsid just when I need it. Pepsid Complete starts controlling acid in seconds. Or there's new maximum strength Pepsid AC. It has double the strength of original Pepsid AC. Both last all day or all night. One. Now, that's a number I can live with. Pepsid. Just one, and heartburn's done. Someone's threatening to initiate an outbreak of a very deadly virus. To stop a weapon that has no cure. They found a body that's been infected. You need a man who knows no limits. Just do it now! The season premiere of 24, two weeks from tonight on Fox. Presented without commercial interruption by the next Ford F-150. Whenever a team from out of town comes rolling into Wrigley Field, the very first thing they check, which way is the wind blowing? Will it be a hitter's day or a pitcher's day? The wind has been coming and going. Right now, it looks like it's favoring the left-handed hitter blowing out a little bit towards right, maybe right center. Not a factor early on in this ball game. one nothing Cubs lead as the Marlins have a top of the order against Pryor here in the third. Low, Al 
you pitch many, many times here at Wrigley Field. How much does it affect you, if at all, on the mound? If anything else, the psyche, when you see that wind blowing in, you feel that much more confident in fastball counts to go outer half and let them rip it. Keep it in the long part of the park. The wind will keep it in the park. After that, that's momentary, momentary thinking. You have to still think about making pitches. It doesn't matter about the wind. If you make quality pitches, more times than not, you're going to get people out. Flyers allowed two hits, walked a batter, struck out one through the first two innings. Bouncing ball off the glove of Pryor and Cresce line. And he throws it by Randall Simon. Pierre will stay put at first base. It looked as though Grezelanek had a little more time than even he thought to make a good, solid throw at Randall Simon. This is where speed really hurts you. You have to hurry up everything. All the infielders are moving. They think they have to hurry their throw. But this is a ball that should be caught by Randall Simon, no question. It should be an error on the first base. This ball doesn't really bounce. If he just stretches, he's got it. That ball went through his legs. If there's an error scored there, which it is, it should be on Simon. They gave the air to Gresolani. The air aboard, one stolen base in this series. He's been thrown out tri twice trying to steal. Simon's not noted spot. for his defensive ability. Watch really. Gresolani off the glove of Fryer. Looks like he goes to the right up the middle and then has to come forward. See a little slip? That little bit might have had him throw off. You got to fear a first base when you got to stretch out and catch that ball. Runner goes, and it's one on it, fouled out of play. So Jack McKeon playing a little hitting and running after Pierre reaches to start this third inning. It's a big error. To Pierre, you want to keep him off at first any way you can, certainly by giving it to him with an error. That's it's big. Pierre led all major leaguers with 65 stolen bases during the regular season, was thrown out 20 times. Another look at that last play. That ball, that ball didn't even short hop. That ball's like right in between his legs. And now the pitch gets away from Paul Bacco, and Pierre will get into scoring position. This ball just running on him a little bit. Maybe the bat in his way. A lot of times a guy will fake a bunt, put that bat right in the eye level of the catcher, makes it a little tougher to catch the ball. That is scored a pass ball on Paul Bacco. Now Castillo bunts it in the air. Diving play by Ramirez. High fastball, tough ball to bunt softly and on the ground. Great play by Ramirez. Great reaction time right off of the bat. That ball up like you said, Al. He's just trying to drop it down the third baseline. But that one backfired on him. I, you know, I love the arrogance of these two guys at the top of the order that will bunt any time. And a guy's in there taking it away from you. It backfires there because Ramirez is in close enough to be able to make a play on that little pop-up. That's where he is. These guys are basically saying, go ahead, play in like you're going to take the bunt away from me, and I'll bunt anyway. That could turn out to be a very big play in this game. It's hard enough to score against Mark Pryor. But Castillo failing to get Pierre down to third with one out in the inning. And now Pudge Rodriguez. Breaking ball in their strike. We talked about it a lot in this series, especially here at Wrigley Field where the grass is thicker in the Midwest this time of year. You, you can't grow grass like they do in South Florida. Ball's not going to get to the outfielders in time, plus it's wet. You're not going to throw Pierre out of the plate. Chopper down to third. Ramirez will throw to first. Two away in the inning, and Pierre still standing at second base. It's a good pitch. Punch is looking back at that first pitch curveball. I'm not sure, because I thought it was a nice hanging, juicy curveball right down the middle. Then he busts him in with a nice two-seamed running fastball. See that ball running on his hands? Look at where it Very bounced. good pitch. That ball bounced about three feet foul and came back. Now a 
it's up to Miguel Cabrera. He flied out to center field his first time up. Breaking ball low and away. Breyer pitching out of trouble for the second time in the first three innings of this game. And will work out of trouble, it appears. Short center. And Lofton calls off Breslin, and that's that. Flyer pitches around the air by a second baseman. Still 1 0 Chicago. This inning brought to you by Wendy's. Here's the pitch, and it's right down the juicy part of the plate. Juicy. Boy, that one had a lot of mustard on it. I like mustard. And he lines it. Bob, this could be a double. Double? Oh, I think he's going for a triple. Triple? They have him in a pickle. That's it, kids. We're going to Wendy's. Yay! Wendy's has a better way to satisfy those late night cravings. We make every classic single and double fresh right when you order it. And here's the throw. Oh, God, stealing. Wendy's, it's better here. It's the winning season for the Hyundai Sonata. Protected by America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Loaded with standard features like dual front side impact airbags. But the Sonata costs $2,100 less than a Toyota Camry LE when comparably equipped. And now, get an extra $1,500 cash back. The Hyundai Sonata starting at just $14,539 after $1,500 cash back. You're the winner at the Hyundai winning season clearance. Going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Next time. Hey, send her a picture of that guy. Ooh, I'll get you a close-up. Be there with the most one-ever minutes and a T-Mobile camera phone. T-Mobile. Get more. The Matrix Reloaded on DVD. Here we go. Reload before the revolution begins. Buy The Matrix Reloaded on DVD. Then see The Matrix Revolutions in theaters. New Dentine Fire. Ruby red shell outside. Intensely cinnamon inside. It sizzles. It's cinnamon. It's new Dentine Fire. Spark something. From executive producer Jerry Bruckheimer. Why does it matter who our parents are? Comes a provocative new series that critics are calling madly entertaining at every burning turn. I want you. His father is the district attorney. Let's take him down. The series. Cubs bat against Carl Pavano, leading 1 0, last to the third inning. Game six of this National League Championship Series, and the Cubs will win away from a trip to the World Series. Like foul by Grezolani. Well, Grezolani is a number two hole hitter, able to do what Castillo, the two hole hitter in the Marlin lineup, failed to do in the third. After a leadoff single by Lofton in the first inning, Grezolanik moved into second with a bunt and scored on a double by Sosa, the only run of the game. Dusty Baker scoffing at the questions posed by the local media, especially about Grezolanik. Fly ball into right field and caught by Cabrera. One away. So here comes Sammy Sosa. Al Leiter, if you're Carl Pavano, how do you come after Sosa? He doubled a knock in a run down the right field line his first time up. With a good piece of hitting on a breaking ball that was down and away, and he hit it the way he threw it, which was soft down and away. I would think if I'm Pavano right now, I would start out just the way he did last time. Fastball down and away. It looks like this win now is favorable to the pitcher. Even though it's blowing to right, it looks more like right and in. Came with a first pitch fastball and Sosa fouls it away. He tried to come inside, middle. Sammy just didn't get to it. I think on any breaking ball they throw, they're going to try to keep it out of the strike zone. Throwing bad breaking balls that he can chase. All right, one and one. High fastball, he's going to go with the slider down the way. 
and it's too low. With one out early, and again, he's up by down by a run. It's important that obviously he uh, pitches him carefully, have a Lou on deck, and he's shown that he's able to throw his off-speed stuff and fastball counts. Came with a high fastball, but away from Sosa and Sammy, a huge swing and a miss. Just beat him. Based on the one-two pitch that he threw with the breaking ball, Sammy was able to stay back and go the other way. I would say he's going to double that up with another fastball. Perfect slider. That was the location he wanted the last time Sosa was up there. While we have a moment, let's send it to Los Angeles. Here's Jeannie Zelasco. Well, if I told you Nomar Garcia Parra had just one RBI in the postseason, would you even imagine the Red Sox would be in the ALCS? They are because usually everyone cowboys up. Not today. Advantage Yankees. So it's crunch time. And depending on the outcome of tonight's NLCS Game 6, you'll be able to see Game 6 of the ALCS between the Red Sox and Yankees. Or you'll be watching primetime Marlins Cubs. Two down, nobody on, and Pavano goes to work on Boise Salou. Fastball in there, strike. Pavano, a 12 game winner during the regular season. An earned run average a little over four, had a couple of complete games. But as we talked about in the beginning of the ball game, Pavano closed the season pitching the best baseball of his major league career. Steve brought it up earlier, he's always been highly touted but has never seemed to put it all together until the final three months of this regular season. And throwing the ball very well here tonight. We asked Jack McKeon if he was worried at all about Pavano's stamina coming into this game, seeing that Pavano has not pitched since the final week of the regular season. He said, I'm not worried about him at all. Big, strong guy and wants the ball. Gonzalez to his left and Pavano moves through the heart of the order in one two three fashion. We play three at Wrigley Field one nothing Cubs. Do you have the right truck. Hi uh, black coffee to go. Does your truck have better resale value than Ford and Dodge. A Silverado half-ton pickup does. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, is this your truck? What's it going for? What do you mean, what's it going for? Let me I make you know. an offer. Half it's not for sale. What do you mean here? It's for sale. But it's not for sale. Silverado, it's the right truck from Chevy. In a world about to change, one man must rise up and lead. AOL 9.0 optimized, exploding onto a screen near you. Reviewers rave. It's the internet simplified, streamlined, and sanitized for your protection. The filters drastically cut spam. The critics agree. AOL returns to the top with new version 9.0. Life needs rave reviews. important messages reach out on the wireless service america trust at&t wireless the league championship series on fox brought to you by at&t wireless go to the game alone and take all your friends with you reach out on the wireless service america trust at&t wireless by midas by chevy silverado it's the right truck and by america online look for 9.0 optimized coming this fall Derek Lee coming up for the Marlins. Mark Pryor struck him out his first time up, came right after him with hard stuff in. 
Cubs pitchers have been pitching him great. He's three for 23, but these guys are throwing mid to upper 90 mile hour fastballs in on his hands, and that's his weak area. First pitch fastball in the air to right center field. Lofton still drifting with the room. Lee now three of 24 in the series. This is another guy that I think they should go in on his hands. This is a guy who broke his hand. I'm the Cubs, especially prior without riding fastball. Mold have to show me that he can throw those hands through the hitting zone. Throw the ball away from him. Hit a hang and split finger out of this ballpark to win a game. Hit another home run on a ball away from him. Get in and see if he has the ability to hit that pitch. First two pitches in the at bat away. One for a ball, one for a strike. Lowell fly out to the warning track in center field his first time up. Ball away. Served out of play again. They stay away from the wall. Two balls, two strikes. Steve, maybe now is the time after you've worked him away, away, away to bring one of those in on his hand. Throws that good riding fastball. Inner half, it looks like it's a pretty good pitch to hit until it starts tailing in on your hands. You end up fisting yourself. There it is. Yep, foul away. Nothing else you can do with that pitch. You hit it, you can't keep it fair. Pretty much set up to go away and again, isn't he out? Slider away. I think he's starting to look better on the fastball. First to bat, he threw him seven fastballs and he hit him hard. Struck him out, fastball away. Second strike out of the game by Pryor. Depending on the outcome of this game, you'll be able to see game six of the ALCS tomorrow at either four Eastern, one Pacific, or if there's no game seven here, eight Eastern, five Pacific. If we have game seven here at Wrigley Field, that will come your way at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific right here on Fox. Sports' biggest month of the year continues tomorrow only on Fox. Two down, nobody on for Conai. Who had an infield hit off Randall Simon's glove his first time up. the call by Mike Riley. 0 and 2. That's just because you can't hit that pitch. This is filthy right there. A little backdoor tailing fastball. Look at it. That's a purpose pitch right there too, isn't it out? Get the guy back off. Sure. Especially after fastball down the way and Jeff's got to look down the way after that that good pitch. He set up a couple ways. He could double up in or throw him the breaking ball down away. Jeff was diving a little bit there. But I like what I've seen about Pryor in this inning, especially, is because in, in that last hitter, what he did to Lowell, we even talked about it. They go away, away, away. They could bust him in one time, and then maybe the hitter thinking breaking ball away, and he's gone fastball away. The guy can't speed up and hit it. You start thinking, all right, he's going to come back with that big sweeping slider. I got to wait just a little bit and poke it in the right field. And then he throws a fastball right by you on the outer half. the top three in the country as a racquetball player ten years ago check swing 
And did he go? The umpire never made the call. The umpire at first base said he didn't go around. It's ball four. He said Larry Poncino out there first. <laughs> Little overhead view of that. I've seen either way. I've seen worse swings get called that he didn't go, and I've seen less than that saying that he did. That's a tough call for anybody. Alex Gonzalez first pitch swing and a fastball fouls it back to the screen 0 and 1. That's the second walk of the game issued by Pryor. This fan two allowed two base hits. Disadvantage for the Marlins in the back of their order. Gonzalez has been as close to an automatic out as there is, and then the pitcher spot after that. I break for yard sales. I break for animals. I break for donuts. Chocolate. My grandkids. Boys. I break for little old ladies. Bingo. Leprechauns. UFOs. I break for free oil changes. Visit your local Midas mechanic now and get a free oil change with any Midas brake job, including installation of our lifetime guaranteed brake pads or shoes. That's free oil and filter with any new brakes. I break for no apparent reason. Sometimes when you search for a job online, you find a lot of really old job listings. I mean, most of them are already filled. But for the ones that aren't, that means that the companies must be really desperate, right? My resume looks pretty good when they're desperate. Hold on. Let's try that again with slightly fresher leads. I got the job because I went to careerbuilder.com. They didn't waste my time with a bunch of jobs that had already been filled, so I knew that whatever I found there was worth going after. Now that's a smarter way to find a better job. Careerbuilder.com. The new Sonic Air Elite by Philips. With patented Sonic technology, its bristle tips move three times faster for a deep cleaning experience unlike any other. For whiter teeth and healthier gums, stop brushing. Start Sonic Air. Looking so long at these pictures of you. Welcome to HP Digital Photography. HP, content. Old Navy Painters Pants at a price that really turns heads, starting at just $20 for men. The Cubs are in play. Fox News is at work. First on Fox tonight, we have a breaking Bringing you story. stories that no one else will think of. Are internet vigilantes the police force of the future? No one else can get. It dawned on me that, you know, maybe he really was a professional hitman. And no one else will touch. I grabbed it like this, and I had something to put asleep. Coming this November, see why Fox News Chicago was the best in the news game. Bar none. Ramirez coming up here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. The Cubs lead the Marlins 1-0. Ramirez three home runs, seven runs batted in in the series. He committed 33 errors at third base this season. But has played on the defensive side in this series very, very well including the game here tonight in the third inning. Third inning with Castillo trying to bunt. 
makes the diving play on the pop-up and then the very next hitter. Nice play down the line and throws him out. The Cubs think he has a chance to be a very good defensive third baseman. And he can swing that back. A breaking ball after two fastballs. He's out in front, but he keeps his hands back. He gets his balance. You see the spin of the breaking ball. The balance of his weight shift is off, but his hands stay back, and he's able to just bounce this one through the left side into the six hole. Now Randall Simon, he lined out to right field, ending the opening inning. Taylor May double play ball here. Gonzalez will handle it himself. And just like that, the bases wipe clean, two gone in the inning. Now Gonzalez, he grounded out to short his first time up. One run, five hits for the Cubs. No runs, two hits for the Florida Marlins against Mark Pryor. What it must be like for Kerry Wood sitting down there. Al Leiter, you have been in his seat before, watching a game six, wondering would there be a game seven, knowing you're getting the ball in game seven. It's a strange feeling because you absolutely want your team to win, but you also have to realize that you have to prepare for your start. And how is he doing that in the dugout? Normally, it depends upon what Woody does, but most of the time you'll go into the clubhouse, watch on the on the TV, get some video, and then kind of back and forth. But he, he could get a lot from watching this on the bench. left his only start in this series trailing three to two that was in that game three 11 inning affair that the Cubs came away with a win three and one now to Gonzalez Mark Redman would start the game tomorrow night for Florida three and two A strike it just looks like punch kind of kind of got locked up on it looking for the ball away handcuffed him you don't see bud pudge box him back there too often three two pitch and it's ball four a two out walk to Gonzalez first walk of the game given up by Pomano who has excellent control walk just 40 batters and just over 200 innings Celebration that Cub fans have not experienced since 1945. Now Paul Baco. Ground ball right at Castillo. And that'll do it in the Cub fourth inning. One hit, one left. We're back after a word from your local Fox station. On Fox News Chicago, is the city really prepared for what could happen if the Cubs win? And we're live with Cubs announcer Ron Santo. Plus, I'm Corey McFerrin. I'll have all the post-game reaction live from Wrigley after the game. It defies logic, boggles the mind, and rewrites the laws of economics. The under 20 grand Grand Marquis is thousands less than the average new car, including Buick LeSabre. Plus, it has more interior room and trunk space, and a standard V8 LeSabre doesn't offer. And now get the under 20 grand Grand Marquis for around 19973 See your local Lincoln Mercury dealer today. 
Give your bath a lifetime of beauty with stylish Price Fister faucets from Menards. This contemporary styled chrome faucet is just $59. An elegant high arc faucet in polished brass is only $99. Save energy and money with decorative fluorescent lights by Good Earth. The Empire, Tuscany, and Glencoe collections are Energy Star rated and include bulbs on sale at 21% off. For great lights, head to Menards. Save big money at Menards. With thousands of choices, including movies, sports, and family programming, all on Comcast Digital Cable with HBO, eventually you'll need to get some sleep. Comcast Digital Cable with HBO. Just $34.99 per month for four months. Call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. Imagine you could make any car you wanted. It'd have to be dependable, have a roomy, comfortable interior, and it would be worry-free for a long, long time. And it would be bulletproof, have like a jet engine and shoot lasers out of the trunk. Wow. It would at least cost a lot less than any car in America. What you'd be imagining is the Kia Rio, the most affordable four-door sedan in America. Imagine that. Visit your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Kia retailers. Hurry, offer ends soon. The Marlins come to bat top half of the fifth inning, trailing Mark Flyer and the Cubs, 1-0. Carl Pavano to lead things off. He'll be followed by Juan Pierre and Luis Castillo. Chicago Cubs now 15 outs away from their first trip to the World Series since World War II came to an end. 1945. 39,577 jam packed into Wrigley Field. 0-2 to Pavano. Pavano caught looking. Now if you want to know how good this pitch is, don't even watch the pitch. Watch the way Pavano reacts to it. Oops. <laughs> he had no chance of even pulling the trigger. Thought he was going to leave that pitch up and in. Nice little break right out over the plate. No chance. The air 0 for 2 reached on an air by Grezelonic in the third inning. A check swing and a foul ball out of play. The air now 5 of 25 in a series. The first Marlin ever over 200 hits this season. Look at the numbers through the playoffs, though, in this series, not good enough. Pierre set five single season records in his first season in Florida. Steve mentioned the hits, multi hit games, stolen bases, at bats, and singles. And that one. Gets by Grezelonic into right field. Second time Pierre has been aboard tonight. His first hit. Stays on top of this pitch really well. That ball goes up and in. Keeps his top hand up on top of the ball. Nice swing. Good balance. Castillo he singled into left center field in the first inning failed to get Pierre to third with a bunt his last time up popped the ball in the air and Ramirez made a diving play in foul ground I think you got to be aggressive here I got to I got to have Pierre running that's his game that's what's got this team this far you got the other guy that can handle the bat at the plate it's a movement going Castillo trying to give Pierre a chance has taken two strikes
foul ball out of play. Still nothing at two on Luis Castillo. Pierre started and then stopped. Maybe he felt as though Stevie didn't get a good jump or a good read. A lot of guys will do that even if they're not going. They want to work on their jump. Watch the fall start there. Work on that jump a little bit. Get yourself going. Make yourself feel what it's going to feel like if you do actually steal the base. Outfield swung way around for Castillo to hit the ball the other way. There you get a look at Alou, Lofton in the left center, and Sammy way over in the right center. Been very successful at throwing him belt high fastballs middle in and having him hit the ball to the shortstop. Pitch out, nothing doing. You see here, even if nothing is going on, the, the fact that you have a, a very good runner at first, everyone's thinking about it. And that's the little bit that it takes to even leave a ball up for Castillo here to, to put it in play, to distract the pitcher enough to not execute a pitch. That's what great running does, good, good base dealers do to a staff. Every guy on the field watching Pierre. He goes, pitch taken high and away, throw to second, and he's out at second base. Pierre has been thrown out three times in four stolen base attempts in this series. Baco and Miller have been outstanding behind the plate. Great footwork by Baco. Watch how quickly he opens his feet, stays square to, to the pitcher's mound, which is basically where he's throwing the ball, and then just throws a bullet. And Gretzelanek drops the tag right on the elbow of Pierre. Look at the way he was blocking the base away as well. And a very good pitch to uh, throw him out on. It almost looked like a pitch out. It was just a fastball up and away. Great pitch for Baco to throw. In the air down the left field line. A long run for everyone. And who got it? Guns out. Two in the inning. will lead things off with a one nothing lead. They said its off-road capabilities verged on overkill. Torag. They said others may be as quick, capable, and handle as sharply, but few can match it on all of the above. Tow, Torag. They said it was everything you could want in a luxury SUV, but for 20 grand less. In fact, the only thing the experts couldn't say? Turig. Tural. Twarg. Was the name. <laughs> Twarag. <laughs> Introducing the Touareg, easily named car and driver's best luxury SUV for 2003. Wow! With Dish Network Satellite TV, you get the lowest all-digital price in America every day. Just $24.99 a month for over 50 top digital channels. A price that's guaranteed through January 2005. Order today and get a free three-room satellite TV system with free installation. That's right. Satellite TV and three rooms of your home free. Want more? Call and ask how you can get three free months of our most popular value pack with HBO and Cinemax. Call 1-800-WILD-DISH or visit Radio Shack, Sears, or a local participating retailer. At the trial of the century, the world waits while the jury deliberates. So, like I said, now it comes in spearmint. Another flavor of Listerine pocket packs? Spearmint. It's called Fresh Burst. And it kills 99% of germs. Mm, yeah, I love spearmint. Order. The jury needs more Fresh Burst Listerine pocket packs? Fresh Burst Listerine pocket pack strips. Kill the germs, feel the clean. And now, cinnamon. Another new flavor from Listerine pocket packs. On nights when the moon is full, just like tonight, he roams the woods. And small children, just like you, or you, may hear... Can you hear me now? 
Good. Making the best wireless network better is causing a lot of excitement. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. It began last summer. We want you to be a part of the family. America loved it, and the critics agreed. California. Now, TV's new It Show is back. I would never do anything to her person. You're not going to get the chance, because you're never going to see her again. The OC, all new, Wednesday, October 29th on Fox. Mark Pryor looks at ball one as we open the last of the fifth inning. The Cubs scored in the opening inning against Carl Pavano. And Mark Pryor has made that one run stand thus far. What great concentration by Gonzalez there. Look, all the guys got to go this way to the ball, but look who's right in the way. The umpire, Mike Everett. He's got nowhere to go. Gonzalez had to worry about running into the umpire and then making the play. Also worried about Ramirez running up his back. Look at Mike Everett. The Matador. Ole! <laughs> two and two to Prime. That's an umpire that you don't normally have to worry about when you're not playing postseason baseball. For those of you that don't know, only four umpires are used for each and every game, six in the playoffs. Swung on and fouled back out of play. They had an umpire down each line when the postseason begins. Down the route right field line, Larry Poncino. Flyer making Pavano work in this at bat. We've talked so much about Pryor and why not an 18 game winner during the regular season 2 and 0 in the postseason but so far Pavano has been more than up to the challenge in his first postseason start. That's his third strikeout. What a way in the inning. We remind you Major League Baseball is giving away World Series tickets for life and other great prizes. Winning hologram numbers will be announced during games one through four of the 2003 World Series on Fox. The ultimate World Series pass presented by Radio Shack. Kenny Lofton singled and scored in the first inning. Trying to bunt his way on, rolls it foul. Kenny Lofton wants to bunt. He should bunt the ball to the right side of the field. Lowell's taking the bunt away down the third base line, but Castillo is not on the second base side. If he pulls that bunt with him, he can walk to first base. You see how deep Castillo is. Time, two balls and a strike. Pudge Rodriguez says, hold on a minute. This is where a catcher gets the tempo and he has a feel. It sits 50, 50 some odd pitches in, 66 pitches into the game. He knows what he sets up in. He can see the flight of the ball, how it's coming out of his hand. So Pudge saw something there that either he's forcing something or just pushing it. So that, that's a good visit. So calm down. Go force it. Nice and easy. Relax. 2-1. Now he comes right back with a fastball in the outside corner that Lofton lifts foul and out of play. Pitch count for Pavano. This will be number 70. Swung on and missed. Back to back strikeouts for Pavano here in the fifth. He has four in the game. Got a nice little backdoor breaking ball right there. Lofton was right on that pitch, just missed it. Slider.
Now Grezzolani go for one who put down a sacrifice in the first inning. Flying out to right his last time up. Strike one on the outside corner. Now we've seen a lot of split finger fastballs in postseason history and certainly here in the last few years. Pavano likes to throw that pitch. We hear so much about it. But for some guys it's made their career finding that split finger fastball. Split split is basically once come out just like a fastball guys that throw it well they they throw it with tremendous arm speed and it's basically supposed to tumble change ups are a pitch that usually fade away from the from the opposite batter a split finger whether on top close which is a split or a fork ball the ball when thrown with your hand behind the ball it tumbles straight down looking just like a fastball that one straight down and Pavano fans the side prior loft and Rezolani go down Pryor has a one nothing lead as we go to the top half of the sixth in game six of the NLCS. Speak. The program Smith has grown beyond your control. You cannot stop him, but I can. In less than 12 hours, the machines will breach the back walls. Neo is doing what he believes he must do. I don't know what he can do to save us. But I do know he will never give up, and neither can we. The Matrix Revolution Rated R starts Wednesday, November 5th. Sweetheart, I miss you. I miss you too. What did you do today? I played soccer. For your most important calls, reach out on the wireless service America Trust. AT&T Wireless. It's the winning season for the Hyundai Sonata. Protected by America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Loaded with standard features like dual front side impact airbags. But the Sonata costs $2,100 less than a Toyota Camry LE when comparably equipped. And now get an extra $1,500 cash back. The Hyundai Sonata starting at just $14,539 after $1,500 cash back. You're the winner at the Hyundai winning season clearance. Going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Come into Sears now to find the lowest prices of the season on home appliances. So whether you need more spin in your spin cycle or more space in your freezer, we've got what you need. We have a better selection than anyone. That's why two out of three homeowners have an appliance from Sears. We'll match any price, plus give you 10% of the difference. And as always, get 0% financing for six months or free delivery on all home appliances over $3.99. So shop now at Sears to find the lowest prices of the season. Sears. Good life. Great price. Got some big NFL appetites heading your way? Looks like you need the NFL deal from Pizza Hut and Pepsi. Order any large specialty pizza at regular price and you get a medium one-topping pizza and a two-liter of Pepsi for just $1.99 more. A Pizza Hut pizza and a Pepsi. Gather around the good stuff. One run, five hits for the Cubs. No runs, three hits for the Florida Marlins against Mark Pryor. And the heart of the order coming up for Jack McKeon's team. Yvonne Rodriguez, Miguel Cabrera, and Derek Lee. Pudge uh, for one is walked and grounded to third. In game one, Rodriguez had a huge night. He knocked in five runs. And then in game five, Rodriguez a solo home run in the seventh inning. In a 4 nothing Florida win. The games in which Rodriguez homered both Florida wins in this series. You see what he has done during this postseason. Hit safely in all nine games. To the tune of 14 RBIs. Up and in, one and two. Show him in. Get him away off the plate. Seven of 12 pitches he's seen have been curveballs from prior. Ball up. Remember the last at bat? Pryor got ahead of Pudge Rodriguez at one and two and wound up walking. That was in the first inning. Not this time. Breaking ball off the plate. He's 
basically coming at Pudge with off-speed stuff. Early curveball down the way, great location. Leaves it up a little bit, probably looking fastball. Great setup pitch there. Tries to double up on him. With the double up on the fastball, that gets him opening up and not being able to get to the curveball. That double up fastball got to that pitch with Pudge swung at it. First pitch breaking ball to Miguel Cabrera and there a strike. Miguel Cabrera has fly to deep center field and then popped up to short center field. 0 for 2. I think one of the things that makes Pryor's breaking ball so tough is the extension that he gets on the pitch. A lot of guys will, as we talked about many times, you'll elevate your breaking ball. I think he extends a lot further than a lot of pitchers do and the paint, the the plane that that breaking ball starts on is much lower than a lot of guys breaking ball it looks more like a fastball to hitters much lower than the average curveball fastball at 95 is strike two to Cabrera this is what you call pitching backwards he pitches curveball curveball then fastball back to curveball Back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the sixth for Pryor. He has six strikeouts in the game. Suddenly this pitch has become very devastating in the game. In the sixth inning, he breaks out the big sweeper that's really tough on the hitters now and going to it a lot more often. You can't hold up. <laughs> a facetious smile out of Cabrera. Now Derek Lee who has struck out and flied out to the warning track in center. Fastball up and in. That's where they've been attacking Lee throughout the entire series. And it's worked effectively against Lee the entire series except when Pryor has been on the mound at least in the first game that Pryor pitched in this series. We brought up Lee only has three hits. Two of them including his only home run came against Mark Pryor. Sosa waiting, and the inning is over. The Cubs are nine outs away from a trip to the World Series. It's only a one-run game. Messages. Reach out on the wireless service America Trust. AT&T Wireless. Spicy garlic shrimp, fire grilled chicken, and our famous baby back ribs. Chili's fajita trio. Want more flavor? Yeah. You may want to take cover. We've had some reports of wild animals in the area. Oh, my. Come on, Donnie. Wild animals? Where? Let's get out of here, lady. The anniversary edition Dodge Caravan, featuring a no-extra-charge rear seat video system. Thanks, officer. Keep up the good work. Disney's The Lion King Special Edition on DVD and in Dodge Caravan, starting at 18.8 after 2,500 cash allowance and 500 in DVD coupon. <laughs> Base camp, 17,000 feet. Whose idea was this? Fortunately, with a laptop powered by Centrino, Intel's mobile technology, you can see a friendly face wirelessly from thousands of places. Even if you can't feel your fingers, Intel Centrino, mobile technology. Engaging a Star Destroyer isn't always suicide. Fire directly at the bridge. But make your shots count, or I'll be sending your medal to your widow. Be smart. Be victorious. Rebel Strike. Rated teen. The vaunted Imperial Walkers do have a weakness. Slice open their gut, and you'll bring them to their knees. Be smart. Be victorious. Rebel Strike. Rated teen. I think when I was younger, I just wanted to come up with a style of my own. 
only thing I come with is the leg kick. It becomes a part of you. <laughs> I live for this. Watch the World Series on Fox beginning October 18th. Don't miss it. Sammy Sosa to lead off the Chicago sixth inning. The Cubs in front, one nothing. Sosa knocked in the game's only run with a double in the opening inning that scored Kenny Lofton. Carl Pavano has only allowed two hits since giving up one run and three hits in the first inning. That's what the Cubs have done all series long. Scored early. Sosa found out of play. Sammy Sosa's hit more home runs against the Florida Marlins than any other player. 31 of them. Sosa to chase that fastball away and Sammy able to make contact and stay alive two and two Sosa to be followed by Moise Salou and Aramis Ramirez. And Rosenthal getting on the phone to the Marlin bullpen that's a swing and a foul ball back out of play. Uh, this is what you call it. This is your cement mixer slider. It spins but you get nothing out of it. Look at that hit me it says. The location had more hit me. Jeez, that just hung right out over the plate. Huge mistake that he got away with. Shattered back. Rounded down to third. Low bare hands. Throws. And it gets by Lee. Sosa going to stay at first base. And I know Cub fans don't like to hear about it. But anytime Sosa shatters the bat on the road, everybody screams, check that back. Know if Sammy touched first base on his first time down the line. That's a serious kitchen ball. <laughs> Watch Sammy see if he stretches out, but does he get it? Uh, I don't think he touched it the first time. Watch him turn around and hustle all the way back to it. Standing down there doesn't really matter. He really tried to stretch out and get it. Crawford thought so. He wouldn't have given them the safe side. He, would have, he wouldn't have done anything. When Wayne Rosenthal, the pitching coach, called down to the bullpen, he asked for the right-hander Fox and the left-hander Don Trell Willis. Everybody on the team is available to pitch out of the bullpen tonight. Except for Redmond. Have the first two on here in the bottom of the sixth inning. We talked to Wayne Rosenthal before the game as well about even Josh Beckett. He said, No way do I want to put you down in the pen. You've had such a great year. You're a young kid. I don't want to get you hurt. He said, You know what? I'll go down there. I can get you an out if you need a big out.
Under normal circumstances, you say no way is Aramis Ramirez up there to butt. The Cubs already have a 1-0 lead. And certainly not suggesting that Ramirez is going to butt, but stranger things have happened in the postseason. Ramirez has swung the bat so well in this series. He had the two home run game. He has three overall. With seven runs batted in. That one the grand slam in the opening inning. And added a second in the same game. Breaking ball in the dirt. And Rodriguez able to keep it in front of him. I'll ask Ramirez before the game how Pavano likes to pitch him. He said, I've only really seen him one time, but the one thing I do know about him after seeing that breaking ball right there is he said he likes to throw a lot of fastballs. And then he just looked at me and smiled like he's going to be sitting dead red right here. Breaking ball that stayed up around the belt. And a called strike, one and one. I only bring up the bunt because, Steve, you were there during the 2001 World Series when another slugging third baseman, Matt Williams, who had not put a sacrifice down in seven years, was asked to bunt by Diamondback manager Bob Brentley, and he put it down successfully. Breaking ball on away, two and one. He's shown a lot of discipline at the plate when after what I had just said he, he thinks he's going to get a lot of fastballs from Pavano. He's seen three straight breaking balls and he hasn't swung at any of them. Ground ball to short. Gonzalez on the back for one throws for a double play. So so on to third two away in the inning. Big round ball double play right there for Pavano. Let's take a look at our in-game box score for the Cubs. Brought to you by AT&T Wireless. Lofton led off the first inning with a single into right center field. Brezolotic moved him over to second, and Sosa knocked him in with a double. Sammy a couple of hits in the game. Likewise for Alou. Jack McKeon gave the ball to Carl Pavano. A good choice. Pavano, an outstanding effort. Dottrell comes on from the bullpen. Swim class, $60. Hockey camp, $340. Driving lessons, $250. Being able to let go. Being able to let go. Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For parents everywhere, there's MasterCard. I break for yard sales. I break for animals. I break for donuts. Chocolate. My grandkids. Boys. I break for little old ladies. Bingo. Leprechaun. UFOs. I break for free oil changes. Visit your local Midas mechanic now and get a free oil change with any Midas brake job, including installation of our lifetime guaranteed brake pads or shoes. That's free oil and filter with any new brakes. I break for no apparent reason. What makes Wendy's new homestyle chicken strips so delicious? The strips or the sauces? Big all-white meat strips, they're the key. They develop the strips because of the sauces. This chicken is so juicy, you can dip it in nothing. Heartland Ranch, Deli Honey Mustard, or Spicy Southwest Chipotle. You call that nothing? They complete the package. Did he just give you the complete the package line? <laughs> Those strips guys with their blonde hair and fancy suits. Awesome. Well, try Wendy's new homestyle chicken strips and decide for yourself. It's better here. It's not just the advanced technology, the 57 patents, or the world's best blades. It's the way it's all put together. No razor shaves better than Gillette Mach 3 Turbo. The proof is in the shave. We guarantee it or your money back. Mach 3 Turbo is the world's best shave. The closest, the most comfortable. It's a fact. We guarantee it. Mach 3 Turbo from Gillette. The best a man can get. Game four starter and loser, Dontrell Willis comes on from the bullpen. They brought him in to face Randall Simon. Dusty Baker counters that move by bringing on right-handed batting Eric Carroll. 
Sosa third two away. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. Southington, Connecticut has to be mighty proud of Carl Pavano. He pitched a solid game here tonight, allowing just one run so far. You thought he was ready for this assignment, Al, and he certainly proved it. He's been one of their better pitchers all year, and down the stretch might have been their best. I didn't see it as second tier at all. He pitched great. And there's strength. When you think about it, the one run they scored in the first inning. A solid base hit by Loft and got butted to second, like kind of a little duck snort double down the right field line by Sammy Sosa. It wasn't like they smacked him all over the yard when he gave up his run. Three and one now to Carlos, who is two of five in his career against Willis with a couple of runs batted in. Alex Gonzalez next. This may be the only batter Dontrell Willis faces. And that ball gets away, and the Cubs lead 2 0. because he's not expecting a fastball to be in the dirt. He hooks that pitch, goes way inside when he was looking for it away. Couldn't get the body over in time to block it. Sosa, nice reaction from third, easily scores. Just under the glove, Hunt Rodriguez. Wildness certainly a problem for Willis in his only postseason start in this series. He walked five batters in two and a third innings. 0 oh and two to Alex Gonzalez. The way Pryor's pitching psychologically for these Marlins players, that is huge. And you could almost accept a base hit or something happened, but a wild pitch, that extra run is big. As this game moves along, we're at the bottom of the sixth inning. The crowd starting to smell it. Let's go downstairs to Josh Lewin. Tommy, much louder from this crowd following the second run scored at than after the first run scored. Almost as though this crowd bred on all the years without the World Series. Figured one nothing was too close for comfort. There's a steady hum of happy chatter right now. Swing and a miss, and that'll end the inning. But the Cubs tack on a run. We go to the seventh. Two nothing back after a word from your local Fox station. I'm Tamron Hall. Tomorrow on Fox News in the morning, how to turn your kid into the next Mark Pryor. Meet the man behind the magic. Plus, find out what turned Carmen Electra on. Why her perfect fantasy man may just be you. Watch tomorrow morning at Ron Santo. All Chicagoans admire him for his brilliant career at third base and as today's broadcast voice of the Cubs. No wonder he always draws a crowd. Can I have your autograph? What other reason could there be? They like my Chevy. Use bonus cash and get 4,000 total cash back on every 2003 Trailblazer or get zero APR for 72 months. Hurry, bonus cash ends October 20th. Mr. Santo, can I drive your Chevy? No. See your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Chevy dealer. Mankind's greatest invention? Fire was clever. <laughs> the telephone. The automobile. And the DVD. But wouldn't it be great if you could record on this? Presenting the Panasonic DVD recorder. My shows, my home movies, even my photos. The incomparable picture, sound, and ease of DVD. Now yours with total control recording to watch whatever, whenever you want. Now this is genius. The DVD recorder from Panasonic. Ideas for life. How are you, Dr. Bello? Before there's money... Fine. There's work. Morning, who's first? Okay. No problem, don't you worry about it. We get it all the time. We'll have you out of here in a jiffy. Okay, thanks, you're done. Has he adapted well to urban life? 
So, what are the symptoms? Hey, he's got a little spunk in him, doesn't he? What can I do for you? Come on, buddy. Oh. LaSalle, the bank that appreciates your hard work. Next time you think about going to Florida, think Southwest Airlines. Right now, fly nonstop from Chicago Midway to select cities in Florida for just $79. You are now free to move about the country. Cubs lead as we go to the top half of the seventh inning, 2 0. Certainly, many, many, many Cub fans. Are thinking back to 1984 was written about a great deal here in the local papers yesterday during the off day and again here today as it's ball one to Mike Lowell. Back in 1984 when the LCS was a best of five the Cubs won the first two games here at Wrigley Field and went to San Diego one win away from getting to the series. That ball in the air down the left field line. Boy say salute with the room one away. Not with that win. San Diego came back and won games three and four of that series. And in game five, Rick Sutcliffe, the best pitcher in the National League that season, was given an early 3 0 lead. But San Diego scored twice in a six. They got the break they needed when the ground ball off the bat of Tim Flannery went through the legs of Leon Durham. The Padres scored four times in a seventh to go to the World Series. Sutcliffe that year went 16 and 1 after coming over in a deal from Cleveland to win the National League Cy Young Award and had that 3 0 lead but couldn't nail it down. Cubs lead here 2 0. We're in the seventh. Can Mark Pryor be the pitcher to get the Cubs to the World Series? 1 and 1 to Conine. Has reached twice. He is singled and walked. Fly ball in the short center. Lofton waving off Alou. Two away. Tony Perez, Andre Dawson, special assistants to the general manager of the Florida Marlins, Larry Bynfess. Of course, Perez, a Hall of Famer with the Cincinnati Reds, among others, and Andre Dawson. A former Chicago Cub National League most valuable player. But tonight both rooting for the Marlins. Two down for Alex Gonzalez. Fastball away, 1-0. away two balls and no strikes well the honors go to Bernie Mac from the Bernie Mac show singing take me out to the ball game tonight it'll be coming your way Sunday November the 9th right here on Fox 8 30 Eastern 7 30 Central getting fired up for the singing here tonight two and one to Alex comes out Be the 95th pitch of the game for the 23 year old Mark Pryor. In the air, right field, Sosa drifting, inning over. The Cubs, six outs away from advancing to the World Series. We'll keep it right here with Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And here's Bernie Mack.
Just moving in. Head now. Do you have the right truck? Does your truck have a Duramax diesel? Does it have an Allison transmission? Silverado, it's the right truck from Chevy. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. With this computer, you can even edit and burn home movies on DVD. That'll be great for the stuff we'll shoot on vacation. Mm -hmm. Oh, where are you going? Rafting. Did I mention you can edit stuff out? That'd be good. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Best Buy. He relies on it. She relies on it. More and more people every day count on Verizon Wireless, the company that gives you America's largest, most reliable wireless network. And now you can also get unlimited night and weekend minutes to use coast to coast when on an America's Choice calling plan. Plus, get two Nokia phones for just $49.99 after mail-in rebates. So you can stay in touch with all the people you know. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. Can you hear me now? Good. Dear Commissioner, Major League Baseball is great, but you know what would make it even more exciting? Instead of a warning track, how about a warning moat? Here's Winder. He smacks a deep fly to center. Hayes is back to the moat. Uh, he's wet. Yeah, but did he hold on? Well, that's the question. He did. <laughs> Gator got him. <laughs> that's good fun. The fans love it. The league championship series on Fox brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. Bottom of the seventh inning at Wrigley Field, and the Cubs with a 2 0 lead. Dontrell Willis on a relief of Carl Pavano. Willis came on with a runner at third and two men out in the sixth inning. On a ball four pitch to Eric Carrolls, was charged with a wild pitch, allowing Sammy Sosa to score the Cubs' second run. I think it's interesting what Dusty Baker's doing with Baco, the left-handed hitter. He has Damian Miller on the bench, but only has two catchers. Does not want a situation come up where he loses both of his catchers by pinch hitting for Baco here. He did pinch hit for the left-handed hitting Randall Simon with Eric Carroll's because Sosa was on third base, and that was a huge run at the time. He wanted to take the opportunity that Carroll's might drive Sosa in. He did via the pass ball on the walk. Three two to Baco. Line in the center field of base hit. Let's take a game break and send it back to Los Angeles. Here's Jeannie Zelasco. And it's a postseason defensive highlight with Derek Jeter not sprawled out on the grass, but maybe this is more impressive. Kids, try this at home. Perfection, execution, two hands, and the Yanks one went away from the World Series. Now here's how it all breaks down. If the Cubbies win tonight, then the Yankees and Red Sox play in prime time tomorrow on Fox. If the Marlins win, we start the day with the Yankees and Sox. Finish it up with game seven of the NLCS in prime time tomorrow on Fox. Trying to bump the runner over and pops it out of play. 0 and 1 in the prior. He struck out twice. Once trying to put down a bun in the second inning. Struck out swinging, leading off the fifth. I think Mike Moles should take a little bit more advantage of charging down third base. Prior should be trying to bump this ball to the right side. Can't get it down at all. Pryor's father, Jerry, grew up in Chicago, attended Loyola Academy. He always provided the best baseball opportunities available for his son. Mark had a pitching coach, Jay Martyr, when he was 12 years old and worked very closely with Tom House, the former major league pitcher and pitching coach. 
will pupil among others Nolan Ryan and Randy Johnson that one put down beautifully Pryor will advance a runner. Tom House's son was on Pryor's Little League team and he was 15 years old. And a huge round of applause for Pryor who struck up that relationship with House at the age of 16. Learned a great deal about biomechanics, physical preparation, nutrition, mental and emotional preparation. I mean, this guy was, for lack of a better word, bred to be in this position here tonight. You start working with guys like Tom House when you're 14 and 15 years old, a lot like Barry Zito with Randy Jones as a youngster. You're blessed to have that opportunity, and certainly both Zito and Pryor have made the most up. Oh, and two to Kenny Lofton. And the desire to want to be better, to be great. Everything you have done, you want to get better and just be the best you can be. He definitely has that in him. Dottrell wanted that fastball in the outside corner, didn't get the call. Gone away already to Kenny Lofton, got the call, didn't get that one. It was a ball. Lofton has had a fabulous postseason. Taken high and away. Scored eight runs, tying a league championship series record. He has 10 hits. And with runners in scoring position in this postseason, he's five of eight. Swing and a miss. breaking balls it's basically a slur but after those couple fastballs he's committed to see the fastball at 90 91 he's out in front waving at a slider slurve in the dirt Jack McKeon will summon the right hander Chad Fox from the bullpen to face Mark Resolano hi guys KFC check this out Cranium can do. Hey, there's chicken in here. It's too easy. Finally, a kid's meal that's fun for kids and moms. KFC's Kids Laptop Packs. Real chicken, a side dish, Mott's applesauce, fruit by the foot snack, and a Sierra Mist. Just $2.99. Mom, did you? The square meal in a fun box. Only at KFC. What we don't have is a duck or a deer or a reptile to help you remember our name. What we do have is over $600 billion in assets. When it comes to your money, that seems infinitely more important. Insurance, loans, retirement, AIG. We know money. E-server for music. E-server for news. E-server for science. E-server for stews. E-server has blades and it's stackable too. You need more, you get more. It's all up to you. E-server can work with your software at hand. E-server will give what you want on demand. From heifers to hogs, there's no task too tough. They're smart, fast, and scalable. All that good stuff. They're flexible, bendable, super reliable. Utterly viable. Give them a triable. IBM E-server X-Series features the Intel Xeon processor. Are selling a lifestyle. I don't give a damn if Goldman's enterprises appear to be legal or not. His father is the district attorney. Every politician needs a target. The rich man's dead. What have I done? You are just six days away from the new series critics are calling madly entertaining at every burning turn. I just want to run away. Skin. Series premiere at 9, 8 central Monday on Fox. Runner at second, two away, Cubs bat, bottom of the seventh inning. Grezolanik, a floater into center field, it'll fall a hit. They will wave around Baco, 
three nothing Chicago. Taking a lead in the bottom of the seventh inning, knocking out Kerry Wood. And then Simon gave the Cubs a one run lead with that two run home run off Fox. That game the Cubs wound up winning in 11 innings. That's a lot of first pitch swinging, driving in Baco. Sammy two hits tonight has knocked in a run and scored a run. He has seven hits in the series and 22 at bats with six RBI. Lined in the right Cabrera coming on it'll drop and on the third goes Gresolak. Just doing a great job of hitting up there, taking his shots to try to hit the ball out of the park with big swings early in the count and then late in the count, going with the pitches away. Just trying to stay within himself and drive the ball to the opposite field. Nice shorter swings out of Sammy. Now's the best time to buy wireless phones and accessories during the big, big sale at Radio Shack. It's so big, it's 
It's, it's the LG VX6000 camera phone. Take, send, and personalize pictures. Just $149.99 after a $50 Radio Shack mail-in rebate. It doesn't get any bigger than this. The big, big sale. Now at Radio Shack, you've got questions, we've got answers. i got a question for the folks at Radio Shack. Mm. Who's in charge of spelling around here? is a definite must for the entire family. Funny, inspiring, and always entertaining. Run, don't walk. This phenomenal film, Radio. Inspired by a true story. Rated PG. Sleep previous Saturday. Opens everywhere October 24th. Happy anniversary, honey. Yeah, happy anniversary. Um, there's something I gotta do. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what? Uh... Have to do. Oh my god. I love this man. I love him. I love him. I love him. Introducing the new full size 305 horsepower Nissan Pathfinder Armada. It's got room for eight people and all their stuff. It's a full-size SUV. For your full-size adventures. Ah, yes, the classic flavor of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. So rich, so smooth, so delightfully mild. Every bean, lovingly chosen, delicately roasted, meticulously brewed. For 50 years, it has remained a tradition of unsurpassed delightfulness. Yes, indeed. Well, the Cubs are in play. Fox News is at work. First on Fox tonight, we have a breaking Bringing you story. stories that no one else will think of. Are internet vigilantes the police force of the future? No one else can get. It dawned on me that, you know, maybe he really was a professional hitman. And no one else will touch. I grabbed it like this, and I had something to put to sleep. Coming this November, see why Fox News Chicago was the best in the news game. Bar none. Nine thousand five hundred seventy-seven in Wrigley Field in Chicago for Game Six of this National League Championship Series on this October the fourteenth, two thousand three. It was on this date in nineteen hundred eight, ninety-five years ago today, that the Cubs defeated the Detroit Tigers two nothing to wrap up their second straight World Series championship. With a victory tonight. As I said, he did not offer it the pitch. The Cubs would return to the World Series with a chance to win their first world title since this day, 1908. Mike Mordecai takes outside. Cubs won their second straight World Series in 1908. Both titles came at the hands of the Detroit Tigers. The Cubs of that era had the famous double play combination, Tinker to Evers to Chance. A pitching staff led by Mordecai Three Finger Brown won 29 games that year. In the air, Alou one away. And it is interesting to note that in those days, the Cubs did not play here at Wrigley Field. They played at the West Side Ground. Game summary brought to you by Nissan Pavano. Solid tonight for Jack McKeon's team. Allowed two runs in five and two thirds. Pryor has been, well, he's been Mark Pryor. Sosa knocked in the game's first run. 12 0. The Cubs have outscored the Marlins in the opening inning in this series. And the Marlins beginning to run out of outs against Mark Pryor. They're down to their final five. Four of 
the five Marlin wins they've had in this postseason have been in come from behind fashion. Two and one to one to you. Just has to continue to obviously do what he's doing, but it's in some respect when you're when you only have a one-run lead as he had up until the last couple of innings, the wiggle room was less. So the focus and attention and aggressiveness and concentration, all the things that a pitcher needs to do to be good, might falter a little. I'm not saying he's doing that, but this guy you mentioned earlier about his his breeding, you know, he gets it mentally, and that to me today, at the athletes in general are physically stronger and they're intellectually stronger. He's got the mental discipline, which is to be strong enough to not allow the exterior distractions to get into his task and focus. Stay on your task and think small. Strike one to Luis Castillo. His trigger is the same. Selection, location, target with aggressive behavior, throw it. That's it. Don't think about all of the other stuff that's going around. One away, a ball to strike to Castillo, trying to get aboard. And trying to get the tying run to come to the plate. This is maybe the one time in the series where they don't care about Pierre at second base right now at all. Pryor could mentally bear down now and get the job done. He just soon have him not score. But with the three run lead, he means not much in the whole scope of things if he can get out of this inning without giving up just the one run. Not even a whiff of activity down in that Chicago Cubs bullpen. more pitches per start than any pitcher in the major leagues this season. This will be 110 on the night for Pryor. And it's 3-2. and two. Of course, just 116 pitches in his first start of this series. Previous to that, he had three straight starts of over 130. He hasn't shown any reason to have any activity. Nope. Stuff's the same. Foul out of play. Castillo making him work. Al, you talked about the pitch that you throw in this situation that you have the most confidence in throwing a strike. And that's what you have to do right here to Castillo, don't you? I mean, he's not going to hurt you with the long ball most likely. All six of his home runs are from the right side. But the guy on deck can, and if he does and Castillo's on, that's a tie ball game. Got to go after Castillo and make him put the ball in play. 3 2. Again, fouled away. A seven pitch at bat thus far for Castillo. And now Kyle Farnsworth 
We'll go to the bullpen mound and start to get loose. away from Baco and advancing on to third is Pierre. So now the tying run will come to the plate for the Florida Marlins here in the top of the eighth inning in the form of Yvonne Rodriguez who has two home runs in the series three homers in the postseason and 14 runs batted in. There you see it again the fan there's a couple fans in there reaching out there to try to catch the ball that's just a little kid right there you can't really fall can't really fault any of them really but here in Wrigley when the opposing team hits a home run they throw the ball back onto the field. I'm surprised someone hasn't thrown that fan onto the field. <laughs> I think he's going to be scared to leave this place. <laughs> Looked to me like at least one of them down there trying to catch that fall ball was a youngster. I don't know about you, Al, but if I'm a 10 or 12 year old kid at game six of a Cub game and the ball comes into my area, I'm trying to catch it. You know, it's a foul ball. Well, Lou thought he was going to make the play, and it certainly looked like he had a chance. And that's all for naught now. The tying one is at the plate. That could be huge. Oh, Pryor got away with a hanger right there, and Rodriguez must have been looking for it because he jumped all over it and hooked it foul. Rodriguez in this series in the postseason, a 500 batter with runners in scoring position. We've seen him cheat and look inside every once in a while when he wants to hit a home run. He's hit both of his home runs to left field, he gets most of his hits to right field but that could work against him right they were trying to go away from him and that ball hung inside he may have thought they were trying to go in there they really weren't Real fast ball right by him 0 and 2 field a base hit by Rodriguez he is delivered again Pierre scores to make it a three to one ball game the tying run is aboard and the go ahead run is coming to the plate and decision time now for Dusty Baker does he give the ball to Kyle Farnsworth in the bullpen or does he leave Pryor out there on the mat Another breaking ball right there. There's not nearly as much break on the breaking balls in this inning That's, as we have seen earlier in the ball game. Both of the breaking balls that he threw to Rodriguez hung. That one got hit for a base hit. Miguel Cabrera is 0 for 3. He homered off Flyer his first start of this series in game two. Round ball in the hole is short. And bobbled by Gonzalez and everybody's safe. They weren't going to turn the double play. They certainly would have gotten the force out at second base. On air on Alex Gonzalez. 
Looks like Gonzalez is trying to just make this play a little too quickly. This is an easy play. You're just going to second to get one out. Get right off the heel of his glove. Now Derek Lee. He's 0 for 3. He's 3 for 25 in this series. But again, to repeat, Pryor's gotten the best of him tonight. But Lee had two hits, including a home run off Pryor in game two. Hammered down the left field line, and the game will be tied up. Scoring is Castillo. Scoring is Rodriguez. It's a 3-3 game as the frustration ends for Derek Lee. I was just going to say that he... Derek Lee has been dangerously close to catching up with one of those fastballs that Pryor has been throwing. He got one on the inner half right there, and he did catch up with it. Inner half, running in on his hands, but not enough. This is a tough ball to keep fair if you're hitting. Lee did a great job of dropping the bat head through and quickly through the zone. What a turn of events. Five straight hitters reach. The Marlins have tied the game prior out of the game. I received this wedding gift from my husband's aunt. But I don't need a monkey lamp. I was extremely torn. I didn't know whether I should just keep the lamp or return it and risk hurting her feelings. So I asked myself, what would Jared do? I would return a lamp. She really just wants you to be happy. Then I'd get a red wine vinaigrette club. So, where's the lamp? The Red Wine Vinaigrette Club from Subway. Eat fresh. You know, some interesting facts about Delaware, guys. It uh, was the first state to ratify the Constitution. Thank you, forefathers. Man, am I glad we wrote that thing up. Each article, I mean, we'll cover all the articles, but... North Carolina. Horse population of 220,000. A lot of hooves, too, almost a million. A lot of hay. <laughs> what is hay, exactly? Is it wheat? Is no, it... I dated a girl named Georgia. Had For when off, you though. need it most, our longest-lasting Energizer Max ever. After that, I told myself... Do you have the bunny inside? I am not dating girls named after states. You're either going to be a singer, a dancer, a, um, an actress, a ASPCA agent, a veterinarian, or stop. She's going to be a teacher, a singer, or a lawyer. She talks a lot. What? I don't want to be a lawyer. But you talk a lot, so you could be good at it. Oh, ah. Let's see. I bought yellow pencils, yellow post-it notes, yellow boxers, yellow boxers. $14. Land courier, air courier, pedicure, reader. $137. Two printers, two scanners, two tutus. $540. <laughs> Keeping business expenses separate from personal expenses? Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Apply online for the MasterCard. Kyle Farnsworth has come into the game for Dusty Baker after the Florida Marlins. Score three times to tie this game. And it's safe to say that every Cub fan has to be wondering right now, is the curse of the Billy Goat alive and well? Two bizarre plays have occurred in this inning, which have helped the Marlins tie this game up at three. There's ball four to Mike Lowell. We start on the pop fly down to third baseline a moment ago. Very close play. As far as being interference, Mike Everett is the third base or the left field umpire who is right on top of that call. And then the bouncer to Gonzalez at short, just one play going to second to get the out there, and he didn't make it. And during that intentional walk there to Conine, you could have heard a pin drop in this place. Go ahead, Mike stands at third. And Jeff Conine, the batter. In the air, right field. Plenty deep enough, you would assume, to get Cabrera home. So to the catch. The throw will come to the plate, and the Marlins have taken a 4-3 lead on a sack fly RBI off the bat of Jeff Kona. You cannot say enough about this Florida Marlins team. Have they gotten a couple of breaks in this inning? Absolutely. 
but the difference between winning teams and losing teams are those that take advantage of breaks when they get them. Silence here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. They are stunned, Tommy. And now the intentional pass will go to the pinch hitter, Todd Hollinsworth. Well, we were talking about it just a short while ago. Eerie how similar this game had been played out to that game five of the 1984 National League Championship Series. The decisive game in that series, Rick Sutcliffe, the best pitcher in all the National League, cruising along with a 3-0 lead. The San Diego Padres scored a couple of runs. They got the break they needed on the ground ball that went through the legs of Leon Durham. They scored four more times to win the game and win the series. second time in the eighth what has been a four run Marlins eighth and they're loaded with two away breaking ball in the dirt one and oh to Mordecai blows a book on prior four runs three of the four runs earned in his seven and a third inning Maybe up there taking a strike in this situation. Not a big tall guy. Farnsworth has trouble throwing strikes at times. We'll get their Pino ready in the Florida Marlins bullpen. And he will come on to pitch. Hollinsworth came to the plate a moment ago for Chad Fox. Hollinsworth aboard. Breaking ball again, down and away. It's hard to believe a guy like Farnsworth has been brought into this game. He is the ultimate power pitcher, yet breaking ball after breaking ball with the bases loaded and two outs here in the inning. Although Mike Mordecai, I don't know, about 100 miles an hour, but he's always been a very good fastball hitter. And he pumps the ball. He doesn't drop, he doesn't, he's not looking to hit a home run. Good fastball hitter. That ball hammered into left center field on the run. Alou on the run is Lofton and it's off the ivy. Three runs are going to score on a double by Mordecai. A seven run Florida eighth inning. And this crowd at Wrigley Field stunned in disbelief. Just set it out. Mordecai, a good fastball hitter. He got one and hammered it. Well, he said about poking it. Uh, this, uh, he obviously drives it, but he's always been a very good fastball hitter, meaning poked, gap to gap type hitter. Uh, and all he did is work the count to get to it. <laughs> Think he's happy? I mean, this a guy has a situation where he just waited for the fastball and jumped all over it. So the change will be made. Pudge and company celebrating a 7 run 8. The vaunted Imperial Walkers do have a weakness. Slice open their gut, and you'll bring them to their knees. Be smart. Be victorious. Rebel Strike. Rated Team. A swarm of TIE fighters can be a deadly nuisance, but if you lead your shots, You'll squash those little womp rats at the vermin they are. Be smart. Be victorious. Rebel Strike. Rated Team.
Got some big NFL appetites heading your way? Looks like you need the NFL deal from Pizza Hut and Pepsi. Order any large specialty pizza at regular price and you get a medium one-topping pizza and a two-liter of Pepsi for just $1.99 more. A Pizza Hut pizza and a Pepsi. Gather around the good stuff. Ted? Hey, man. Remember how Ted was talking about his new acting job, but he was a little, um, hazy on the details? Right up here, baby. Well, ladies and gentlemen, say hello <laughs> to Pickle Boy. I'm so glad I got to see this. Happy to help. Picture mail that talks from Sprint. At Sprint stores, choose from a wide selection of picture phones starting at $99.99. Share it when it happens. For name brand lighting, you'll feel right at home at Lowe's. I'm looking for light for my foyer. And it's got to be special. Exactly. Lowe's has the brand name, styles, and finishes. Like that. The kind you'd expect at a lighting showroom, including the Kitchener line, even ceiling fans. And Lowe's has low prices every day, guaranteed. That's our promise. Wow, that must have blown your budget. Nope. Lowe's, improving home improvement. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Seven runs scored by the Florida Marlins still batting here in the top of the eighth inning. They have stormed back after trailing 3-0 when this inning began. Mike Remlinger now on the pitch. And Juan Pierre the batter. Lined into right field, a base hit. They're going to wave around Mordecai. He will score. It is an eight-run Florida eighth inning. The Florida Marlins in their five postseason wins this season, four of the five, they've come from behind to win. As you look at the numbers on Remlinger so far in this postseason, the Cup bullpen has not pitched well as a group in this series. They've had good games at various times by different pitchers, but by and large, they have struggled. 0 oh, and 1 to Luis Castillo. Eight runs, the most runs scored in any inning in the postseason by a Florida Marlins team. You may be saying, no kidding. Well, in game three of the 97 World Series, Al Leiter certainly remembers a seven run ninth inning to outslug the Indians 14 11. Sounding overly dramatic here. You certainly hope and pray for the safety of those fans down the left field line that are taking a lot of heat from the fans down that way about a possible interference of Moise Salou catching that pop fly in the stand. I think it's safe to say the fan did something, Steve, that any normal person would react in such a way. And it's certainly we're walking a fine line now, but. You know, a fan's getting out of control and doing something that they shouldn't do. Meaning taken out on those fans sitting down there in the left field corner. They're yeah. thinking that it's, you know, somebody down there's fault that the Marlins have scored eight runs in this inning. There are very few fans that come to a ball game where they see a ball coming towards them no matter where they're sitting and wouldn't react and try to catch it. Part of the reason why you come to the game. Popped up down the first baseline and Rosalina got to get it. And that'll end the inning. The Florida Marlins take advantage of a couple of strange plays and a big error to score eight runs in the inning. The Matrix Reloaded. Buy it now on DVD. Reload with special features that show how the Matrix phenomenon came to life. Action. Huh. Upgrade. The Matrix Reloaded. Buy it now on DVD.
Cash or credit? Oh, hey, Yahoo. Oh, making me dizzy. Oh, Bank One. British Airways? Bank One. Top of the morning to you. I'm not really British. I sound like it, don't I? Borders. Let me guess. Bank One. Bank One. Bank One. Hey, Helen, another Bank One. Hundreds of leading names, one you. This is so you. Find the car that fits you best. Cute dog. Oh, you two have the same eyes. Individual answers. Bank One. Introducing the new full-size Nissan Pathfinder Armada. With room for eight, who will you bring? I do love him. As long as you're happy. Picture mail that talks from Sprint. At Sprint stores, choose from a wide selection of picture phones starting at $99.99. Share it when it happens. The League Championship Series on Fox brought to you by Nissan and your Nissan dealer by Sprint. Proudly offering picture mail and PCS Vision picture phones. By Pepsi Complete. Just one and heartburn's done. And by Bank One. Find the credit card that fits you best. Individual answers. Bank One. Eight-run Florida Marlin eighth inning. And the Cubs come to bat in the bottom half of the inning, trailing by five. Lou Gethard Mina takes over on the mound for Jack McKeon. It's in there. Strike one to Aramis Ramirez. That is the second eight-run inning this year by the Florida Marlins. In well over a thousand innings of play. Swung on and fouled back out of play and talk about a time to do it for the second time. This situation now becomes very good for the Florida Marlins as far as the way they close this game down. They've been almost closer by committee between the two guys, Urbina and Looper. Now McKeon has the opportunity to have either or and right now Urbina in the eighth. Out away by Ramirez. He's one for three in a game. We're talking about this whole series about the importance of Pierre Castillo to this lineup. Pierre double Castillo walk. Set the whole table. What a great one-two punch. Now you know better than, than anybody. You know, a lot of times uh, after the game is over, a pitcher will be asked about the pitch you allowed the double to Derek Lee, say, in the inning that knocked in a couple of runs. You'll be asked about, you know, the, the two-run single you allowed. But oftentimes it's a walk with maybe one man on and one man out in an inning. And I'm sure the at-bat that Pryor might most like to have back is the walk to Castillo. Yep. That was after the foul ball down the line that Moises Alou was unable to make the play on into the stands. A lot of times people will complain too. You'll, you'll throw a you'll throw a 2-2 pitch to a guy that you think is a strike, but then you throw the 3-2 pitch down the middle and a guy hits it nine miles, but that's the one you want to complain about. Why don't you get the guy out on that next one? Swing and a miss, and gone is Ramirez to open the Cub eighth inning. In a lot of ways, it's no different than what we saw with Gonzalez committing the year. I mean, after that pop fly ball down a left field line, as you said, Steve, Pryor walked Castillo. He then allowed an RBI single to Rodriguez. The error by Alex Gonzalez. The 2 1 double by Lee. That was all for Pryor. An intentional walk, sack fly RBI, intentional walk, three run double and a single. And so it the all cut happened. pitchers had a lot of chances to get out of that inning. 
And it all happened within like a minute or two. If you think <laughs> about the play down the line with Mo in the stands, you had a curveball for a single, first pitch to Cabrera, E6, first pitch to Lee, double. It all happened within a minute, too. He was the guy that scared me the most in that inning as far as coming to the plate with men on because it looked to me like he was getting closer and closer to timing Pryor's fastball. And he got a first pitch fastball and hammered it. Fly ball, short left field. Conine runs it down quickly, two away here in the Cub eighth inning. Time to take a look at our results to our Sprint Virtual Manager question. You logged on and logged in. Who has the best starting staff? Among the four teams left. Surprise, surprise, the Cubbies. <laughs> He's not even close. <laughs> they love to vote. Alex Gonzalez pops it up. Short center field, Castillo out to get it, and the Cubs are gone one, two, three against Urbina in the eighth. We had four in the ninth. Marlins in front, eight, three. Well, that's the last of it. The original rugged Nissan Pathfinder, and introducing the new full-size Pathfinder Amato. Pathfinders, countless adventures. When you care about your car, you want to keep it protected. No one understands that like your state farm agent. We live where you live. That's why more people insure their cars with State Farm than anyone else. Because we care about you the way you care about your car. When Taco Bell first created the Zesty Chicken Bowl, we thought we'd freshly prepare them, right at your table. We still freshly prepare them, just not at your table. The Zesty Chicken Bowl, grilled all white meat chicken, seasoned rice, cheese, crisp lettuce, and Fiesta salsa. Made right when you order it, so it tastes even better. For fresh made taste, think outside the bun. I just want to feel clear, wide open. I want to re-enter the world. I just want the pressure to leave. I want to feel like myself again. I want my head back. Introducing new Tylenol Sinus Severe Congestion. I was stuck, now I'm unstuck. It relieves congestion, pressure, and has Tylenol for pain, so it relieves more symptoms than even the leading sinus prescription. I'm back in the land of the living. No more singing the blues. New Tylenol Sinus Severe Congestion. Gone. Dentine Fire, Ruby Red Shell Outside, Intensely Cinnamon Inside, It Sizzles, It's Cinnamon, It's New Dentine Fire, Spark Something. Still a huge crowd out on Waveland Avenue beyond the left field wall here at Wrigley Field. They were ready to celebrate a trip to the World Series. They still have a chance, though we go to the ninth inning and the Cubs trail by five. Former Florida Marlin Antonio Alfonseca takes over on the mound. Ramon Martinez takes over at short for Alex Gonzalez. Rodriguez lines one into left center, one pitch and one out. You know, the feeling of this crowd and the way they're stunned right now, you talk about the 84 game, Tom. That the Cubs were involved in with the San Diego Padres and how they, the Padres, came back and beat them three straight. It reminds me very much of the 86 World Series. The ball went through Bill Buckner's legs and the Red Sox ended up losing that ball game. But what a lot of people forget is that that was game six. The Red Sox did have a chance to come back and win game seven. It was almost so mentally crushing they couldn't come back. You would hope that the same 
feelings don't linger around a Cubs ball club that has a chance to come back and win game seven and you certainly have a momentum builder for the Florida Marlins if they hang on and win this one. Rounded and through the hole in the left field a base hit for Miguel Cabrera. He reached on the air by Alex Gonzalez in that eight run eighth inning. Just an excellent effort tonight. A surprise starter in game six, filling in in place of Brad Penny. And a long night, or a long eighth inning, I should say, for that Cub fan among many, many others here tonight. get one and they get two to win the inning. The Cubs have lost 67 consecutive games trailing after eight. They'll try and change that as they bat him in ninth at game six. Let's see. I bought yellow pencils, yellow post-it notes, yellow boxers, yellow boxers. Fourteen dollars. Land career, air career, pedicure, reader. $137. Two printers, two scanners, two tutus. $540. <laughs> Keeping business expenses separate from personal expenses? Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Apply online for the MasterCard business card. A truck like this isn't built in a factory. It's built in the farms and fields, concrete streets and construction sites that map the landscape of an entire country. Because when Ford builds the new F-150, there are promises to keep. And only one truck earned the right to be the next F-150. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Painters pants at a price that really turns heads, starting at just twenty dollars for men. George of the Jungle is back to groom his heir, not comb his hair. Oh. Now George must swing into action to save his son from the low-down, lecherous loser Lyle. This constant stream of annoying alliteration. Is annoying! And they say humans are more evolved. George, George, George of the Jungle 2. Watch out for that sequel. Own it on Disney DVD and video. George of the Jungle Tuesday, October 21st. Marie Callender made her chicken pot pie with tender white meat chicken and a golden flaky crust made from scratch. And we're still making it Marie's way. Marie Callender's chicken pot pie made with the care of Marie. Faces here at Wrigley Field in Chicago after the Florida Marlins scored eight runs in the top of the eighth inning. They come from behind against Mark Pryor in the Cub bullpen. Juan Encarnacion takes over in right field. Rubina still on the mound trying to nail it down and send us to game seven. The Game 7 matchup would be the same matchup we saw in Game 3. That 11-inning marathon at Pro Player Stadium of the Cubs beat the Marlins 5-4. to four. <laughs> Kerry Wood left the game in the seventh inning after giving up two big runs in that game and was trailing 3-2 to two to Mark Redden, who allowed two runs in six and two-thirds innings. Oh, and two to Paul Baco. I think it should be noted, people should know that the Cubs organization here did the right and smart thing by escorting that fan in question on that foul pop up down the line with a, a 
bunch of security members and led him out of the ballpark so that nothing bad would happen to him. But you know what, guys? We were talking about it in between innings. I mean, here's a young man that came to the ballpark here tonight, clearly a huge Cub fan, listening to the game on radio, hoping to see something that hasn't happened to this franchise in 58 years. Came here excited, rooting on his team, and one freak split second play is at strike three to Baco. You can only hope and pray. And again, some out there may say, ah, the guy's being sappy. You know what? You only hope when that young man goes to work tomorrow, goes home to his family tonight, that people are going to understand the position that he was in and by no means blame him for anything that happened in that inning. It's Absolutely not his right. fault. Oh, it's not only not his fault, but the same advice that my father used to give me when I used to complain that the umpires used to beat us all the time. That he said, the umpires will never beat you. Might not help you with occasionally make some bad calls here and there but you will always have opportunities in the game in order to win a ball game and that play right there didn't help the Cubs but it did not beat them fly ball in the right field and Carnacion is there and the Cubs are down to their final out the coordinating producer of Major League Baseball on Fox is Michael Weissman Tonight's game produced by Jeff Gowan, directed by Jim Lynch. Our associate producer is Carol Langley McDermott, the associate director Larry Lancaster, and our broadcast associate Kevin Dresser. Thanks to our technical producer Craig Marlowe. The pregame show produced by Gary Lang, directed by Bob Levy, coordinating producer Scott Ackerson. Studio technical supervisor is Jack Simmons. The senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown. And the executive producers at Fox Sports are Ed Gorn and David Hill. And thanks as always in the booth for the work of Mark Wagner. Popped up in the foul ground. Mike Lowell with room. And we are going to a seventh game in this National League Championship Series in stunning fashion. The Florida Marlins score eight runs in the eighth inning and beat Mark Pryor and the Cubs 8-3. Psycho, you said it before the game. The pressure was on the Marlins tonight, and you believe it falls squarely on the shoulders of the Chicago Cubs in Game 7. Now, there is no doubt about that with an organization who hasn't won a World Series for 95 years, hasn't been to one since 1945. They were now expected to get there. Up three games to two in this series with their best pitcher going. They've got an outstanding guy going tomorrow in Kerry Wood, but there is some serious, serious pressure on his shoulders tomorrow night. I think the three of us sitting up here in the booth, along with nearly 40,000 in the crowd, cannot believe in a lot of ways what we just saw happen. I think Al said it the best when he said it happened so, so quickly. And a loss like that for the Cubs, it's demoralizing. That, that wasn't just a, a clean loss. The boost that that Marlin team is feeling right now is absolutely going to flow over for tomorrow. The, the, the swing is totally gone to the Marlins. Let's send it downstairs to Josh Lewin. Derek Lee had been 3 for 25 in this series before the big hit. Tell me about the big hit, Derek, and what a load off it must have been. Oh, man, you know, uh, it seems like every time I'm up, I got someone in scoring position. I am able to get the big hit, and, uh, you know, I just want to pick my teammates one up one time, and uh, tonight I got a big hit, and it felt good. It seemed like you were close, though. You were on a couple of Mark Pryor pitchers earlier in the game. Yeah, I, I haven't felt bad the last few days. Hitting some balls hard right at people, but, uh, you know, just before that at bat, my hitting coach told me to keep swinging the way I had been, and uh, it worked out. The Luis Castillo at bat, he worked to walk, set up all the magic in the eighth inning. The, the top of the order continues to shine for you guys. Yeah, those two guys at the top, Pierre and uh, Castillo, they're, they're our catalysts. And those guys are getting on, we're tough. And uh, tonight, Pierre had a big game. Luis had a huge at bat. It was about 10 or 12 pitches, and uh, that set the tone for the beginning. All right, now game seven, Kerry Wood. Tell me about what you're thinking. This is what it's all about, man. You know, comes down to game seven, you got two great pitchers going tomorrow. It's going to be a great battle. You know, they don't, they don't give up, we don't give up, so it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. Congratulations on the double. Thanks, Derek. Thanks a lot. All right, Derek Lee got it done. The fight and fish fight on. Tommy, back to you. Josh Lloyd, thank you very much. So, the Cubs had a three games to one lead in this best of seven. Josh Beckett took care of business with a complete game two hit shutout. 
Tonight, the Marlins' bats come alive in the eighth inning and rally to beat Mark Pryor and send it to Game 7 tomorrow night. For more information on tonight's game and the latest information on Major League Baseball, go to FoxSports.com. For Steve Lyons, Al Leiter, Josh Lewin, and our entire crew, I'm Tom Brenneman saying thanks so much for being with us from Chicago. Jeannie Zelasco and Kevin Kennedy will be along from Los Angeles in just a moment. The Marlins win at 8-3. We'll see you tomorrow night. Jack Bauer's greatest challenge. Someone's threatening to initiate an outbreak of a very deadly virus. And his weakest moment. You were under for six months. I know what they did to you. Are about to collide. Think you can hide it from me? I'm warning you. Don't go against me. They found a body that's been infected. What happens next is on you, Jack! Kiefer Sutherland, 24. Premieres two weeks from tonight on Fox. Presented without commercial interruption by the next Ford F-150. It began last summer. He's not a criminal mastermind. He's a kid who has nowhere to go. It became a sensation. We want you to be part of the family. Where it's going is anyone's guess. You're sending me to a mental institution. The OC is back on a new night with all new episodes. We're always one mistake away from someone taking you from us. The OC returns Wednesday, October 29th at 9 on Fox. Good evening, I'm Robin Robinson. I'm Walter Jacobson. Oa Heartbreaker at Wrigley Field has now forced a seventh game in the National League Championship Series. Coming up here on our news tonight, we'll go back live to the ballpark for complete coverage of the loss. So some folks are asking, not me, but some folks are asking, <laughs> has the curse returned to Wrigley Field or maybe it never left? We'll hear from the fans. All that plus today's top stories next. Ready for another light beer? Yeah. Other light beers have their place. We just don't recommend drinking them. Amstel Light, the beer drinker's light beer. Now at your local Ford store. Zero interest, zero down. No payments until 2004. Get zero interest for 72 months or $2,500 to $5,000 cash back on every 2003 Explorer four-door. Windstar, Focus, ZX2, Ranger, and Taurus. That's interest-free financing for 72 months or big cash back on all these best-selling Fords. Zero interest, zero down. No payments until 2004 or $2,500 to $5,000 cash back. Now at your local Ford store. Unlike watery tasting light beer, Amstel Light makes your mouth water. Great tasting, low calorie, low carb, Amstel Light, the beer drinker's light beer. I'm Gary Chico and this is 33rd National in Chicago. This is the house I grew up in. My family didn't have a lot of money, but we had two parents that loved us and we got a great education. As president of the Chicago School Board, I saw what better schools can mean for all of our kids. I send my own children to public school. Education means more opportunity, a better job, a piece of the American dream. For me, that's what it's all about, and that's why I'm running for the United States Senate. I'm Gary Chico, and I approve this message. Loyola cancer survivors join their caregivers at the Brookfield Zoo for a celebration of life. Cancer almost took my life, but the great people at Loyola saved me. Loyola's cancer experts have created one of the fastest growing cancer centers in Illinois. No one beats cancer alone. It takes a team with expertise and compassion. Getting cancer isn't your choice. How you fight it is. Loyola University Health System. We also treat the human spirit. The best values in America just got better. Now at Dodge, save even more with our biggest cash allowances of the year. Get an incredible 4,500 cash allowance on 2003 models, like Durango, with best-in-class available seating, the Magnum-powered Dakota, and the Sporty Stratus. Or choose 0% APR financing for 60 months. Plus, get Dodge's 7-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Don't wait. See your Dodge dealer today, because the best values in America just got better. Get it! I'm Cameron Hall, exploding cell phones. Is there any truth behind the rumors? And find out what turns Carmen Electra on, why her perfect fantasy may be you tomorrow at 7. Live from Chicago, this is Fox News Post Game. Get in the air, got a left field line, a line reaching into the stands and couldn't get it, and he's living with a fan. 
heartbreak in Wrigleyville. The Cubs blow a late lead and lose to the Marlins, setting up a do-or-die game seven tomorrow night and keeping talk of that dreaded curse alive. Good evening. I'm Walter Jacobson. And I'm Robin Robinson. Corey McFerrin begins our coverage live from Wrigley Field. If he's uh, been resuscitated, Corey. I tell you what, to say this crowd here is stunned and silenced would be the understatement or the overstatement, I should say, of the century. This place is dead silent. We all saw it happen right here on Fox, the eight-run explosion in the eighth inning. Nobody can quite believe it. I'm told Dusty Baker is addressing the media right now. Let's listen in. But when you get five outs away, there were fans can counting down the outs, yep. and then the fan interference had. Do you think... At some point, is it not the curses, but do you think the history no. creeps in? Nah. Into the lack of players' minds? Nah. It has nothing to do with the curse. It has to do with, you know, like I said, that fan interference. The uh, very uncharacteristically, uh, under, under, whatever I want to say, um, uncharacteristic error by, um, by Gonzo, because he, I mean, he doesn't miss anything. And then they just start hitting. It has nothing to do with the curse. It has to do with their bats. They start hitting. So. No. History had nothing to do with this game. Nothing. Right here in front. Dusty, I know fans have been one of the biggest assets of the team this season, but mm -hmm. do you have any words for that gentleman who stuck his hands there and took up the ball away from Moises? No, not really. I mean, the only words I have, maybe he was a Marlin fan. That's the only thing I can come up with. Dusty, you're you're a, a big motivator of the players. W what are you going to do? I mean, it seemed like it really uh, knocked the wind out of the. There was a lot of momentum here tonight, and what, what, what do you do? Do you hold a special meeting or something? And or what, well, there's nothing I can set? do tonight. You know, I mean, tonight there's nothing you can do. I think it's something overnight tomorrow. We got Kerry Wood going, and uh, you know, it's going to be tough to beat both those guys. And so, I still like our chances very much. We're at home here tomorrow, Game Seven. I think they beat us two out of three there. Here we beat them two out of three down there. So, you know, we're just we're back to even, and uh, you know we just got to go out and play and play better ball tomorrow. Over here to the left. Dusty, one of the positive positive things uh, is that you still do have home field advantage, and with mm -hmm. the fans backing you. Yeah, we do. And so, I mean, anybody thinks this is over, I mean, they they're not a Cub fan. I mean, this isn't over by a long way. So. And, and it's still to our advantage here. We got Kerry Wood going tomorrow, and we're still at home. So, as far as I'm concerned, you know, we're still in very, very, very good shape. Okay, over here to the right, Dusty. Dusty, uh, as either a former player or a manager, have you ever understood why home fans sometimes interfere with the home players trying to go into foul territory and make a catch? No, I, I've, I've never understood that. And I probably never will. I don't know if it's a natural reaction to try to catch the ball, but if you're for your team, you got to like, let, you know, give your player every opportunity and chance to catch that ball. Okay, and Mo again. said he had. I talked to Mo. He said he timed it perfectly. He was right there, and then all of a sudden the ball was gone. Again to the right. Yes. Dusty, just to follow up with that, what did Moise say to you about the play? Yeah, I asked Mo. I mean, because where we were, we couldn't see it in the dugout. And I saw. Then after that, I saw the fans jumping up and down and making noise and I asked Mo what happened. Mo said he had it perfectly, he timed it perfectly. And you know, the ball was just about to enter his glove and then all of a sudden it was it was gone. And that's that's what Mo said. Right here in front. <clears throat> Can you give us a sense of what the reaction is in the clubhouse tonight? What's the feeling? Well I mean the feelings right now is very you know, it's quiet and subdued. But um you know, we know it's game seven. We know these guys are tough. We know they don't quit. And uh, we don't quit either. So the feeling and attitude is, hey, man, I mean, it's our game to win tomorrow. That's the attitude. Okay. Oh, over to the left. Dusty, I know you don't want to dwell on negativity, and you said yesterday that fans should stop thinking that way. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say to them after this game? Well... I mean, we need them tomorrow. That's what I have to say. We need their positiveness. We need their, their noise. We need their, uh, you know, need them pulling for their team, our team, like they've never pulled before. I mean, this is probably one of the biggest games in, club, in Cubs history tomorrow. And as it is for our team, we've never done anything easy. It hadn't been easy all year long. I mean, we went to game five in Atlanta and won that one. Here we are in game seven uh, tomorrow. And uh, so that's what I got to say. Just... Uh, you know, nobody hang their heads. Uh, I'm proud of my guys. 
And uh, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna see us come out tomorrow and fight and battle until the last out. And uh, hey, man, it's our game to win tomorrow. Any last ones for Dusty? Okay, go ahead. Go, get wait for the mic. Dusty Pryor has been basically unflappable all season, and uh, on the fan play with Moises, I mean, he showed mm -hmm. that he was upset, and they also showed on the replay that you know Pryor was shouting "fan, fan." Do you think that was just a moment? Do you think he got phased by that and rattled at all? No, I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, he settled down um, after that. Um, you know, he had he had Pudge 0 and 2, and got a breaking ball. You know. Oh, over too much of the plate, and Pudge can hit. And you got to give Pudge credit, and then the next play, Cabrera, you know, we had a ground ball. And like I said, I mean, I thought we were out of the inning at, the, at that point, and then we're going to turn it over to Borowski because I thought that was, he was getting close to his limit. And, uh, you know, he had gotten Lee out pretty good, and Farnsworth was warming up, and he hadn't gotten Lee out very good at all. So, um, no, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Mark Pryor. I don't, he didn't lose anything. They just hit him. Okay. Okay, any last one? No? Okay, thank you, Dusty. Okay. Dusty Baker doing his best not to appear jolted by what he saw tonight. Five outs away from a trip to the World Series. The Cubs fail to seal the deal. Steve Lyons comes in right now from Fox Sports. And we, we've seen some great comebacks. We've seen some teams collapse before. I'm reminded of last year's World Series game six a little bit when you see this happen, but you still had to be in uh, in utter disbelief upstairs watching this ball game. Hey, the 84 Cubs against the San Diego Padres, uh, the 86 Red Sox against the Mets. There's, there has been some big ones. Uh, this was unbelievable because it happened so, so quickly. Pryor looked like he was just cruising along. They didn't have anybody up in the pen. They didn't need anybody up in the pen. And I totally agree with Dusty Baker. I mean, this was his pitcher to either win or lose the game. That was the guy that he wanted to go with. It just happened so quickly. Of course, that foul ball down the line, I mean, you have to feel for that that kid that tried to catch the ball. I think a lot of us would say, how could you do that? But you know what? 99% of us would have done the exact same thing. You see a ball coming at you, you try to catch it. And then Alex Gonzalez, the guy who makes that play 99 out of 100 times, drops the ball. Just hurried a little bit, and all he was going to get was one there anyway. And then Derek right. Lee came up, and I really thought Lee was getting closer and closer to getting on Pryor's fastball. And as you get later into the game and he gets tired, he got one in, he handled it, and drilled it into left field. And, you know, it's all of a sudden, you're looking at a tie ball game, and then, of course, they went on to score eight in that inning. Easy to second guess now. Did you think Dusty should have gone to the pen a little more quickly with uh, Mark Pryor? I really don't. I, you know, he was sailing along. He was making his pitches. It was a couple errors that hurt him more sure. than anything else. You know, he's in there facing Lee. Uh, you know, Farnsworth is an outstanding pitcher, but he also has a history of coming in and being wild. This is a pretty big game. You know, you go with your big game pitcher, and that's Mark Pryor. I don't have any problem at all with, with who was in the game at the time. You look at the Moises Alou play down the left field foul line where the kid interfered with, with the catch, and, and you wonder, is that going to be the the memory, the Leon Durham moment, the Bill Buckner moment that will live on forever in Cubs fans and baseball fans' memories. I think there's no doubt that it will. I mean, obviously, uh, if the Cubs come back and win this game in Game 7 tomorrow, it'll be laughed at and will be forgotten, but that's a huge play. It was a very close play to whether or not it was fan interference or not. Of course, the ruling is if Moises Alou has to reach into the crowd, then it is the crowd's ball if they want it. And you right. can see he is reaching over the plane of the wall, it looks like to me. I think it was a good call by Mike Everett down the line. You see, once again, there's a million different replays. And look, there's about four or five fans All reaching, reaching in. for that right. ball. And as I said before, if I'm down the line, yeah. I reach for the ball. You know, it's easy to say, oh, he's a Cub fan. You should have stayed away and let Moises catch right. that ball. But the fact is, we would all do the same thing. That's why we bring our gloves to the game. That's, we're hoping that someone hits us a foul ball. Right. And that guy's going to be... Uh, you know, villainized by, by people Absolutely. around here, and I, I, I think it's going to be very sad if that happens. We heard from the uh, security force that he was taken away for security reasons in case some fans wanted to pile on after they, the incident. Yeah, they should have yeah. taken him away, yeah. gave him a new hat, a new pair of sunglasses, and a new sweatshirt, too, because everyone yeah. knows what the kid was wearing. But, yeah. you know, he feels bad. There's sure. no question. You know, Tom mentioned during the broadcast that yeah. when he goes to work tomorrow, he's probably going to catch some heat, and I just hope that Cub fans react the way that Cub fans should and in the way that we all believe they will, and, you know, leave the kid alone, you know, especially, you know, I'm sure he's going to take some good-natured ribbing, but, you know, he yeah. did not beat the Cubs tonight. Right. Let's talk about momentum here now. The Marlins, obviously, a team all year that's come back. The resiliency they've, they've shown is unbelievable. Fifth postseason comeback win just this year. Yeah. 
w obviously a huge boost for them. And typically, I mean, history tells you that that's enough to, to send you on to victory the next day. It, you know, it, it really is. And we talked a lot about that in the open of tonight's ball game. that the pressure was all on the Marlins because if they didn't win, they had to go home. But if they got to a game seven, the pressure is hugely now on the Cubs. This is an organization that hasn't won, hasn't been to a World Series since 1945, hasn't won one in 95 years. They were heading this series three games to one. They were now expected to win. It's the first time that this organization has been expected to win in a hundred years, you know, right. so it's 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 a, a very much a pressure packed situation for Kerry Wood and the rest of this ball club tomorrow night. Talk to me a little bit. Maybe it's premature, but let's talk about Kerry Wood. Last time out, he did not have his normal stuff against this team. What do you look for him from him tomorrow night? Well, I take 80 percent of Kerry Wood's good stuff on almost any night. Right. You know, I think all Cup fans would love to see this guy come out and just dominate the way we've seen him do in the postseason, with the exception of his last start here. Uh, you know, that's what he's expecting of himself. I think the, all the Cub players can hang their hat on that. I think they went into this game saying, hey, it's Mark Pryor. He's our ace. He's the guy we count on. But it's an equally same situation for Kerry Wood, too. They think of him, you know, as an ace and ace A. You know, they're, they're both equal. Uh, Kerry Wood didn't have quite the numbers that, that Pryor did this year, but we know how dominating he can, he can be when he has his good stuff. And Kerry Wood, absolutely, you know, he's probably sitting around right now relishing this opportunity to go win a Game 7 for this team. Right now, that team in the clubhouse is in shock, and to say there is no panic in the streets in Wrigleyville, we'd be lying if we said oh, anything yeah. different than that. Let's look at the highlights right now of this ball game from the very beginning of this game. Supreme confidence, of course, Steve. World Series, our priority. Everybody felt like this game was a lock. First inning in Sammy. He would come up with three hits today. Here drives in Kenny Lofton with the double, one nothing the score. And some great defense, Steve, too. How about the play Aramis Ramirez made here? Everybody talks about the 33 errors that he made this season, but he made back-to-back -back nice plays down there at third base tonight. And Mark is just rolling. Top of the sixth inning, Kays, Pudge Rodriguez. And then up next, it'll be Miguel Cabrera. The last thing you're thinking is that he's going to get pounded a little bit in the eighth inning after obviously being let down by a couple of tough plays. And watch the breaking balls, the nasty break on those pitches early, and then you won't see that break quite as strong later in the game. And here's the boys' play once again we've been talking about. Would have been the second out of the inning. After this fish made it a 3-1 game, Miguel Cabrera's chopper. That would have been his second out of the game. Alex unable to handle it. And then the killer, Derek Lee, who was overdue with the shot to left field. And that scores to tie game at three at this point. Kyle Farnsworth comes on for prior. Mike Mordecai just crushes one. And right then you knew this ball game was over. Mordecai's a tough out. He's a little guy up there, good fastball hitter. You can't fall behind him. Farnsworth did fall behind him with a couple breaking balls and had to come in there with a good fastball to hit. And Mordecai did his job. You know, one of those at bats I think that that Pryor would love to have back would be the walk to Castillo because right. after the foul ball down the line that Moises couldn't catch the next pitch was ball four you know yeah. you get Castillo out in that situation then you're looking at a totally different ball game absolutely again the final here eight to three there will be a game seven here at Wrigley tomorrow night we're going to pause right now Steve Lyons Corey McFerrin with you much more coming up including pictures we understand of the young man in question who was taken away tonight after the incident down the left field foul line back with more here on Fox after this. Push for the Pennant is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Thank <laughs> you. 